Hey guys. <laughs> I know it's uh it's been a while. Um I want to say first and foremost that I see the new subscribers that hopped onto the channel and I appreciate all of you. I really do appreciate it. I'm very happy. I thank you guys and I'll get more Jedi Survivor out when I have the time. It's just with a new puppy and my job taking up a lot of my time. It's been it's been difficult trying to get everything out. But um, something happened recently that I wanted to share with you guys. And I kind of talked about it before, not in depth, just kind of very lightly. Um, but recently, it's... He, something's happened, okay? And we'll get into that in a minute. What, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to tell you guys a very long story. And there's happy moments in it, for sure. But um, mostly it's just, it's, it's a sad story. It's a very sad story. We're going to jump into the story about him, <laughs> okay? And when I say him, I'm not meaning like this is a horror story or anything. It's just, it's, a, it's an experience that I had that I wanted to share with you guys because maybe it'll help you guys with whatever situation you're, you're going through and hopefully you can get out of it sooner than I did. But um, what this story is about is my ex-fiance, okay? And I will use his name because it's a very common name. I don't freaking care if you guys find him or not, okay? That's, that's where I'm at in this kind of mindset at this point. But let me take you back about, at this point, it would be almost, it would be nine years. Let me take you back nine years to the summer of 2014. In the t summer of 2014, okay, I had, I'll take you back a little bit before 2014. So I went to college in the fall of 2013, okay. I graduated high school in 2013, so that fall I went to college. I went to um, my community college in my area. Well, it's not really in my area. It's a community college of Denver. I'm going to reveal a lot of details in this story, and I feel comfortable doing that because, um... One, I don't have a whole lot of followers, so it's fine. Um, I'm not afraid of what happened in the past. I'm, it's, it helped shape who I am and why I, where I am today. And it also shaped who I am or who I eventually become and who I will eventually turn out to be in the future. So, you know, take what, take, take what you will from the story. But in, uh, 2013, I went to college in, to, at CCD for um, psychology. I, was, I wanted to be a psychologist. And I lasted a semester and a half. So I finished the fall semester in 2017. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> the fall semester in 2013. And then I did half of the winter or spring semester in 2014. Um, I dropped out, and I believe it was mid to late March that I dropped out of college. And that la my mom let me have like a month, a couple of weeks, a few weeks to kind of get my life together. And I ended up getting a job at where she worked, which was a local gas station down the street from where we live. So it was a win-win because I didn't have to waste money on gas to get to my job. And, it, you know, I had a job. <laughs> <coughs> so in 2014, I got this job. Now, there's some very important details to know at this point. Um, at this time in my life, I was very much close to my cousins. We, I was over at their house every weekend. We'd have a uh, family game night. So it was me and my cousins and uh, my aunt. We would be, I would go over to their house, wherever they living, were living at the time. And we would have a family game night. So we'd play board games. We would play, um, video games. Excuse me. We'd play video games. And, um, sometimes we would drink. We'd have a good time. That's very, that's kind of important to the story and it will come in later on. So, um, in the summer of 2014, I have this job at this gas station and, um, there's a guy that comes in every day. Now this guy, his name is Ray. Okay. That is his name. That's my ex-fiance. His name is Ray. And he would come in every day, you know, sometimes multiple times during the day, depending on where their jobs were at. 
he was a ranch hand for a local fence and rancher in the area. So basically what he would do is he would go build fence, he would repair fence, he would take care of cows, he would um, grow hay, cut hay, sell hay. That's what their job was year round. So Ray was this ranch hand for a local rancher in the, in the town that I grew up in, that I still live in today. And um, he would come in in the morning, he'd get gas in the work truck, he would get um, cigarettes, he would get uh, energy drinks, he'd get snacks, um, just to kind of tide him over until lunch. And then sometimes they'd be back for more fuel or he'd need more cigarettes or whatever. And then he'd be back at the end of the um at the end of their work shift. So he would show up at like seven and then he'd show up around noon or two between noon and two. And then he'd show up again around six, seven o'clock at night. And, um, so at this point I was mainly working anywhere between noon and close. And we close at the store at that time closed at 9 PM. So I usually saw him for his lunch breaks. And after he got off work, that's usually when I would see him and he would come in and we'd you know, after a while, we'd have the normal discussion like, oh, you know, hey, how's it going? Oh, doing good. So on and so forth, whatever. And, you know, as time went on, I think this went on for like two months because I think it started in May that I really started to see him a lot because I think I got my job in April. And, you know, we I didn't really compute that he that was who he was until I started seeing him more and more and more. And that was about around May of 2014. And we would just have these quick little discussions while he was getting his stuff. And I was checking him out. And I'm like, you know, at the register checking him out. And also subtly. Um, (laughs) Or not so subtly. Depends on your definition. But um, so for a few weeks, we just had those little minor, you know, uh, small talk discussions. And... At this point, so at this point, he was staying with his dad who lived um, 10 minutes away from me. He lived in the next town over, which is 10 minutes away from where I lived. And so I would see him very frequently. About two months later in July is when things started to really kick up. So in July of 2014, um... Our, our conversation started getting a little bit longer and um, nothing super crazy. It's just like, you know, oh, what do you have planned for this weekend? And he would tell me that he's going up to his mom's who lived in Denver. Um, he would go up to his mom's and he would hang out with his mom for a while, for the weekend. And he'd come back on Monday to his dad's house where he was staying for the re- week. Because that way he didn't have to drive from Denver all the way out to where we were at, which is like an hour drive on a good day, you know, not including um, rush hour, which is almost all the time on I-25, I swear to God. This one night, I think it was early July, um, I was working the late shift. And basically, when you work the late shift, of course, anybody who has had a job at any kind of a store or anywhere, when you have the late shift, you do all the clothes work. So our clothes work was like um, counting the lottery tickets, getting everything locked up and put away. And part of this was also like taking out the trash. So what I would like, what I did when I was doing the trash, and this is not pertinent to the story, but it's kind kind of is. But uh, what I would do is I'd grab all the trash cans in the store and I'd bring them up to the register because a lot of times, because I'd do this around seven thirty eight o'clock, um, I would do it at the register because that's when a lot of times you would have customers coming in and it was just easier just to do the trash there and then just take care of the customer when they came up to the register to check out and then go back to doing the trash. So... I'm taking care of the trash. I'm doing my thing. He pulls up. He's filling up his car because he's going to his mom's for the weekend because it's a Friday night. He's going to his mom's house. He's stopping to grab energy drinks and snacks and stuff to get him to the uh, through the drive. It's um, probably about 8.30 at this point. I started pretty late. I don't know why I started doing this later. It's a mystery to myself. But it's probably about 8.30 because I remember it was close to close. And he came in and he grabbed his stuff and... Um, we got did our little small talk thing, and he told me he was going up to his mom's, and he was going to hang out with his friends and have a party and have fun. And I was like, oh, that sounds like fun. And so I finished, you know, we finished checking out, and I tell him to have a good night. And at this point in time, and this is also very important, this is a very important detail. He, at this point, was driving a semi-modified 
uh, early 2000s or late 90s Volkswagen Jetta. And I say slightly modified because this thing was loud. I mean, you could hear it. And the reason why it was so loud, I, I think I remember him telling me it has something to do with the muffler. I don't really remember. Um, this was almost 10 years ago, so have mercy on me. Um, but it was a very loud muffler. I mean, like I would be, cause where he would drive by is about where my bedroom is. So when he'd drive by, I would hear his car drive by in the morning when he was going to work. So I always knew when he was driving by. And so I, he hops into his little loud Jetta and he's at the gas pumps, which is like across the parking lot from where the store is. And he takes off. And I hear the Jetta go around the store. He makes a whole turn. So I hear him drive down and around through the um, back alley that we have. And I'm waiting for, you know, the inevitable, you know, it didn't pop. But I swear, towards the end of its life, it did pop. That's important information I'll get to later. But um, I was waiting to hear the Jetta take off down the highway. It never came. It got actually got louder because he had come back around to the front of the store and parked and then came back inside. I was just doing my job. I wasn't really watching him. I was just, I just could hear everything that was happening. And so when I heard that the, his car door shut in front of the store, I kind of looked up and I look over and I see him get out of his car and walk to the front door of the store. And of course, at this point, we're still open because we didn't close till nine. And so he comes in and... I kind of look up. I'm like, hey, you know, what's going on? Are you okay? What's what's happening? Do you need anything? And he's uh, he just kind of stands there and he watches me for a minute. And I'm like, what is this guy's deal? What is he doing? You know, why is he just looking at me? This is so weird because this has never happened to me. So when he was just kind of watching me, I was very confused because I've never been involved in that kind of a thing. And so... I kind of ask him again, I'm like, are you okay? And he just kind of looks at me and he looks over and he grabs a lighter. He's like, I just, I forgot to, I forgot a lighter. And I was like, all right. So I rung up the lighter and he grabbed it. And then uh, I turned back around because I thought that was it. And I went back to go do, finish the trash. And, you know, I was waiting to hear the ding of the door as he's leaving, but it never happened. And so I kind of turn around and he's still standing there and he's looking at me. And I'm like, are you okay? Did you forget anything else? And he goes, actually, could I get your number? And at this point, I was like majorly crushing on him at this point because, you know, we were having these long conversations. We're making each other laugh. We're having a good time. And I'm like, you know what? I've been stuck in the same town since I was born. I've never had a guy ask me for my number before that was legitimately serious about it. I've had jokes. My, that's a whole story for another time. We'll get to that another time. If this does well, I'll tell you guys my life story of being bullied. Okay, we'll get there later. (coughs) But I was like, yeah, sure. So I write down my number and I give it to him. He smiles, thanks me. He says, has a good night. I said, have a good night. See you Monday. And he leaves. Um, so from that morning on, you know, we're, we're texting and we're doing the whole, you know, get to know each other thing. And that brings us to the next segment. I'm going to give you the warning now, and I should have done it at the very beginning. And I'll do it at the beginning of this segment because I forgot to warn you guys. But this story does involve um, alcohol and it does involve drugs. So it's July 16th, 2014. Um, So we've been texting for a couple of weeks, getting to know each other, kind of figuring out how, if we'll fit together or if we'll, um, mesh well, make good friends or whatever. But he's like telling me all this stuff and I'm kind of, you know, I'm sympathetic and, um, trying to, trying to establish a connection with this guy that I've had a crush on for a few weeks who seems to like me as well. And so we're exchanging all this information. Um, a couple of weeks of all of that, and he finally asked me out to date to go on a date. And we threw out a bunch of ideas like, well, why don't we have um, go to Sonic, have an ice cream date, get to know each other a little bit better. We can go to a movie. We can go to dinner. We can do all this stuff. And it was, I think we finally landed on um, going to a movie, which is exactly what we ended up doing. <laughs> but, um, so, oh, sorry, mm, man. 
So he finally landed on going to a movie. And I think it was going to be a Friday night or a Thursday night. Probably a Friday night. And I'm still at this point working late shifts. So I don't get off until 930. Because after you close the doors, you still have to do all the clothes work. Like getting the money counted, put it in the safe. Getting all that finished before you can leave. And so usually I get done with closing at about 9.30, 9.45, depending on, how, <clears throat> depending on how late I had to stay with what was going on in the town. Because if we had a rodeo in town, if we had um, any big events happening in the county, a lot of times people would roll in a lot of times between 8.45 and 9 o'clock and you'd get this huge line and you don't get the door closed until later. So I normally got off around 9.30. And so we made this plan to go see a movie, and I think the movie was Transformers, whichever one came out that year. I don't really remember anything about the movie. I don't remember much about that night, I, but I will tell you what I do remember. So I remember we landed on a date. We landed on a time. And uh, it was going to be this date. I think it was a Friday, and it was going to be after I got off work because I had to do like a 5 to 9 or whatever. I don't remember. Anyway, it was after my shift on that Friday night. And so the agreed upon plan was he was going to come over and pick me up at my parents' house, my dad's house. Because at this point, my mom and my dad were not living together. They were they were separated, I guess is the technical term. My mom was living elsewhere and my dad stayed in the house. So um, I was staying with my dad and I had come home from work and... I was, um, I got changed. He came and he picked me up and we started to drive off to Parker to go to Arapahoe Crossings to look at, to watch the movie. So we pull up to the theater, we go inside, we buy, we get the tickets and we get uh, concession stuff and we go into the theater and we start watching the movie. I don't exactly remember everything that went on while we were watching the movie. I know we actually watched the movie. Okay. Get your minds out of the gutter. We actually did watch the movie. I think the slyest move he did was like putting his arm around me and he, like he held my hand and stuff throughout the movie. And that was fun. Cause I was like getting all gittery cause, um, giddy, jittery, giddy, whatever, same thing. Cause the last time I had a date there didn't go over well. And that's another story for another time. <laughs> I have a lot of stories, you guys. Um, <clears throat> but you know, I was getting all happy. And I was like, wow, this is the best date I've had here. If, even though I only had one other date, in my entire life. So we watch the movie. The movie ends. We get up to leave. We get out to the parking lot and he's starting to reach into his pocket to grab his keys when he finds out he can't find the keys. And so he starts like freaking out. And I, if, when I say freaking out, I mean literally freaking out. He's like, I gotta get the keys. I gotta find the keys. I gotta find the keys. I'm like, all right, fine. Let's go get the keys. Which I'm not being like, you know, unsympathetic to his issue because it's very important that we get the keys otherwise we're stuck in parker unless until someone can come get us or if the theater closes we're stuck until morning until we can get back in and find the keys <clears throat> so we go up and they let us back in and we go to the theater and we start looking for the keys and um we he finds them they fell out like so i guess i don't know how this happened because he had you know you know boys pants they have pockets you know they have pockets like the size of your head you know deep pockets so I'm really confused at how they got from his pocket under the seat but that's what happened like they had somehow wiggled their way up his pan up his pocket fell out and then fell on the ground underneath their seat and we never noticed I don't know how this happened but apparently it did but uh, we find the keys and like this entire time he's like frustrated. He was getting very frustrated. And sometimes when people get frustrated, they get very angry. And he was like cursing left and right. And he was just very, he had this look on his face of just pure frustration and anger. And, you know, I, I was very sympathetic at the time. Because I'm like, I know this is not, you know, he probably had high hopes for this date. And probably losing the keys wasn't part of his high hopes. But, you know, it was quirky, it was unique, it was something different, and, you know, it didn't really ruin the night, you know, it just added a little bit of an inconvenience, because no night, well, I had to work the next day, but not the next morning, he didn't have to work the next day, because he had, he was planning on going up to Denver the next morning, so it wasn't, it wasn't life or death, but he was still, like, very upset, and... 
So we find the keys. He calms down. He kind of apologizes to me. He's like, I'm sorry. You know, I didn't mean to get so upset. And I was like, it's fine. Whatever. Let's just, let's just go. So we leave the theater for the second time, get to the car. We get in the car and we sit there and we're listening to music and we're just talking. And that is when we have our first kiss. Cliche moment entered. Okay. <laughs> we had our first kiss in his car in the parking lot at Chinese Man Theater at Arapaho Crossings. And I can tell you almost the exact spot where it happened because it's like burned in my brain. But, uh, you know, we have our first kiss and we, we sit there for a little bit longer. We're talking. We're having a good time. Um, it starts getting later. I'm like, you know, we should probably head back. You have an early morning tomorrow and I still have to work tomorrow. And he's like, all right, yeah, you're right. And so he drives me home. Um, the entire drive home, I had like stolen his hat. He was like wearing this DC hat. I'll, I'll include a picture and I'll put it right here. Um, there, I have a picture of myself wearing this hat the week that I stole it, by the way. Um, so I stole his hat and I'm like wearing it in the car and he's holding my hand. I'm kind of like leaning on him and, you know, we're talking on the way home. And that is when he asked me to be his girlfriend. And I said, yes. That brings us to December of 2014. Now, the, these chapters, the way I set them up is for important dates, okay? I'm not going to go through month by month by month by month for the entirety that we're together, but I'm going to give you enough of an idea of our relationship that will hopefully help somebody or give you an idea of what I was working with. Okay. In December of 2014, he and his dad had this huge fight. Ray and his dad had this huge gigantic fight. I don't really remember what it was about to begin with, but the way that Ray said that it happened was he was on his bed, um, at his dad's house on his computer, on his laptop. And his dad kicked in the door. I think it was because he was late on payments for rent or something. I don't remember. He was bad about paying rent at his, for his dad, just so you know. And I don't, I don't, I think that might've been the catalyst. I don't know. But his dad kicked in the, his bedroom door, um, screamed at him, Ray screamed back. They got into an actual fist fight that ended when Gary grabbed the laptop and punted it down the stairs. (laughs) And I know this is fact because I saw, (laughs) I saw the carnage afterwards (laughs) because after Ray had moved out, Gary turned Ray's room into a grow room. (laughs) That is the most stupid, that's the stupidest thing I've ever had to say in my life. I'm not going to lie. But anyway, Gary, so Gary kicks Ray's computer down the stairs. Ray gets upset, grabs all his stuff, gets into his car, drives to the store. I'm working that night. He comes in. He has tears coming down his face. He's upset. And I'm concerned. I'm like, what's going on? Are you okay? What's happening? And he tells me kind of the story of what happened, like basically what I just told you. And he's like, you know, I don't want to have to go back to my mom's because I don't want to drive from Denver every day because that's like an hour, hour and a half one way. So that's like two to three hours or four, depending on the day and the time of drive time. He's like, I can't afford that. I can't afford the gas to do that. And he's like, I don't want to get up that early, which fair. He was really bad about getting up early. And he'd had, he's like, I have nowhere else to stay. And I was like, give me a minute. So I text my dad and I tell him kind of what happened. I was like, you know, Ray and his dad got in a fight. Ray got kicked out. Can he stay with us a little bit until things get figured out? My dad said, okay. So after I close up the store, we go to my ha- my house, kind of work on slowly getting him moved in. That lasted for two months because in towards the end in January of 2015, um, there's a house that um, Ray's boss is a property manager of, and they have a renter already there. Her husband had passed away a couple of years previous. She's had recent medical issues. And Ray tells me, he's like, he comes up to me one day and he tells me, you know, there's a house that we can rent up, you know, on, um, up North that we can get for a pretty cheap, you know, we have an inn because, you know, I work for Bob with Bob is his, um, was his boss. So I work for Bob. We should be able to get into it relatively easy. You know, what do you think? And I was like, well, 
maybe we'll see what happens because at this point i think she was still the the wife was still living there the renter wife um a couple weeks later she has an, a heart attack outside the house she dies and now the house is going up for availability and so ray's like do you want it do you want it do you want it because him and bob had been talking about it little did i know at that point that Ray was like, you know, I might be interested in renting this place. You know, it'd be perfect because we do, because they have cows there. That's where they grow a lot of their hay there. And he's like, I'll be close. I'll be able to take care of the cows there in the winter. I can cut um, after hours, um, cut hay after hours, stack it, bale it, whatever needs to happen. And Bob was okay with it. And so Ray came to me again, you know, a, a couple weeks later. And he's like, do you, you know that house? You know, she, the lady that was living there, she died and it's now available if you want to go look at it. And I was like, yeah, sure. Let's look at it. You know, I want to look at it and first to see what's going on. So we go in and the entire inside of the house wasn't bad. It was, it's, it was a weird house. So it's like an old style ranch house. Okay. So it started off as like a two room. Yeah. A two room house. Okay. So you have the main room and like a bedroom and then they just added on to it. So they added on another room um, that ended up being kind of like a, an entryway, I called it. It was like a huge entryway, <laughs> if I'm going to be honest. I mean, that entryway is probably about the size of this room right here <clears throat> that led into the living room. And then if you turned right, they at, that had the kitchen. And then if you turned right, that had the laundry room, which used to be a porch, but they ended up closing it in. <laughs> weird and if you from the living room from the entryway if you turn left there's a bedroom there that was part of the original house and um if you turn left there is a enclosed porch that they turned into a closet and then if you go straight through the living room from the entryway there's another bedroom that was an add-on um which was basically just sitting on cinder blocks but that wasn't the horror story of this house the horror story is the lady that lived in it before had cages of animals in the in the um, laundry room so many in fact that there was feces everywhere urine everywhere it smelled really bad when we uh, i'm jumping ahead i'll wait and then uh, she had like a chicken she had a rooster running loose so there's like chicken crap all over the walls all over the floor they were the couple i assume were very heavy smokers because the walls and the ceiling were doused in thick nicotine i mean to the point where we would just like spray water or whatever on the wall and it would just run just run orange or brown or whatever it was disgusting but the reason why he wanted it was because it we had use of like five acres so it was a size like it was on 200 acres but the um, 195 that we didn't have use of was rented out to Bob for cows and hay. So that was the purpose of the 195 acres. The five acres that we had use of had the house, it had a barn, it had another barn, and it had um, like a well building. It used to have like, a, it's like a sh little shack that had a well in it at one point. It used to be like a wash building or a... a shower building bathroom i don't remember what it was for originally i don't remember it was a while ago and then it had this garage and this garage okay that he fell in love with had a pit in it and what the pit is it's like a four to five foot deep rectangle hole in the floor of the concreted or in the concrete floor of this garage and he's, he was in love with that. He's like, man, I could just, I don't have to lift vehicles anymore. I can just drive the vehicle over the pit, hop in the pit and work from underneath. And I'm like, okay, whatever. But is it really worth the rest of this house? He wanted it. So that brings us to April, 2015. That is when I had finally saved up enough money to do the um, de the security deposit and first month's rent, which the amount for this house, which ended up being like a two bedroom, one bath house. And I mm, kind of one bath. It was basically a closet with a shower and a toilet. Okay. That is the bathroom <laughs> in this house. It was $650. 
that's nothing to sneeze at when you're 20 and looking for a place to live, right? So we get the house in April. And then what happened was I paid for all of it. I paid the entire $1,300 for the security deposit and the first month's rent. I paid for the renovations and I mean light renovations and I'll include pictures as I talk about them here. <laughs> I have to figure out where it, that is. Um, but basically my mom and I spent an entire month cleaning this house from top to bottom. And basically we had to go in with bleach to the point where our eyes were like stinging for like days. It sucked because we would like, oh God, I'll show you the pictures here because it'll explain everything. Like the ceiling was nasty. It was, it had to have been bleached. There was no way we were going to get anything out of that ceiling without bleach. The floor in the kitchen. Okay. The rest of the kitchen was fine. The floor. Okay. It was, I guess at some point it had been carpeted or it had been um, laminated and the glue that was holding the laminate, it had to have been laminate. So the glue that was holding the laminate, okay, was still on the floor, but the laminate wasn't there anymore. So there was no way to clean that floor. So my mom and I went to Home Depot and we bought like floating laminate, laminated floor. So it was like basically um, laminate hardwood kind of. It was like a floating floor and it was like very flexible. It was like fake floor, right? And it basically just stuck onto itself and not the actual floor because we didn't get the okay to do the kitchen. <laughs> I was actually told that I was taking advantage of the actual property owner because the deal was any renovations that I made to make it livable, I could give um, the property managers, Bob, the um, receipts they would give it to the property owner and she would deduct that from our month's rent. But apparently I was doing too much and that wasn't okay because I was taking advantage of her. Whatever. You live in that house the way it was before I did it, did anything, okay? Then tell me I did too much. But uh, we installed that floor ourselves. Um, oh, the bathroom. Oh, I wish I had a picture of the bathroom. So... The, ba the 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 there's a basement underneath the house. It's a small basement. It only encompasses um part of the original house, which would have been the um the living room and the kitchen. Those were the original rooms. So <laughs> in the basement, we go because in the the oh, I can't I can't with this house I hate this house I hate this house so much I can't tell you how much I hated this house the entire time I lived there okay <laughs> it was horrible but uh the floor in the base in the bathroom okay I'm gonna start there the floor in the bathroom was Boeing okay the toilet had sunk into the floor at least two inches so in order to make that okay, we had to replace the subfloor and put a new floor in and a new toilet. Okay, that was the way that we were going to be able to do it. So the reason why the toilet had sunken was one day we had gone down into the basement and this was how the freaking toilet was supported. There was a scissor jack on the floor of the concrete basement. On top of this scissor jack was a 4x4. Four four. And what that 4x4 four four was holding up was the pipe from the freaking toilet. <laughs> okay? I cannot make this up. That is exactly how this bathroom was supported. I can't believe that this old little old lady that was living there before us did not fall through that floor. Oh my god, it was so bad. So... We were able to do that and have that taken off the rent. And that was the last thing that I was able to do with a discount on the rent. <laughs> anyway, we get the house. It took a month for me and my mom to be able to get it somewhat livable. And we did all the renovations ourselves. Ray was nowhere to be found. But he wanted that garage that bad, apparently. So that brings us to October of 2015. Now this from April until October, 
um, we had several fights. Okay, the biggest noticeable one that we had was probably in, oh man, would have been July because it was close to the, our one year anniversary. And the fight was basically he was not helping with the rent. He wasn't helping with bills. He was disappearing frequently all night for several nights during the week. And he would go hang out with um, his friend Chris, who later would be outed as somebody who stole from Bob, Ray's boss, and from Ray himself. And that friendship ended pretty quick. But uh, we broke up because of that in July, and that lasted for about a week and a half, maybe two weeks. And we met up at the park, and we had a long discussion, and we decided that moving in together that quick was a little too fast and that we needed to take a step back. So I had moved out of the house, moved back in with my dad, but I was still paying rent and I was paying the electric bill. That is what I was living with for three months, okay? Here we go. In October of 2015, we we were kind of on better footing, but not a whole lot. I was still super stressed about paying all the rent, the entire electric bill by myself for a house that I was not living in. I was stressed. I was upset. He was still, you know, acting like everything was fine, that, you know, what I was doing didn't, it wasn't, he acted like it was, it wasn't an inconvenience for me to have to support him. Okay. Which, Should have been another red flag, if I'm going to be honest. But, you know, it was just, it was a lot that I had to go through. And he would constantly complain that his boss, Bob, um, wouldn't go through with his promise. So, he, like, when he got hired on, he was told, like, hey, after two years, you'll get a raise, you'll be a partner with the company, and, you know, you'll make commission off all the jobs. Bob, he was complaining that Bob wasn't following through on that promise, mainly because the reason why Bob didn't go through with this is because Ray himself started to get lazy. Okay. And I say that because he had issues getting up early to go to work. There were numerous times because I would like After we got back together, I would stay over at the house, you know, a couple days a week. There were several times we were woken up by Bob knocking on our window and like yelling at him, like, you need to get up. We got to go. What are you doing? We got to go. We have a job. And that happened several times during the week for weeks on end for months. (laughs) Okay. This was a normal thing and nothing would get him up. Okay. And I refused. I was already paying everything. I was paying the rent. I was paying the rent, the electricity bill. I was paying for our propane gas because we didn't live in town where there was natural, uh, other natural gas, like, um, whatever. We didn't have natural gas. We had propane gas, which I guess is kind of natural gas, but you had to like order it. You know, it's not readily available where somebody reads your meter and then charges you for the month. You know, it it was something you had to order on an as needed basis. I was paying for the propane. I was paying for my um, truck payments. I was paying my credit cards. I was buying groceries. I was paying for my fuel. He was charging his fuel. So Ray was charging his fuel. Um, and the deal was, uh, at the end of the month, any, or at the end of the week when Ray got paid, he would take... Because he was supposed to get two receipts from the store. One receipt was for the charge and one receipt was for Ray. So that way Ray can give it to Bob. And then Bob would take out that amount at the end of the week from his paycheck. That was the deal. <clears throat> but uh, Ray was char- was charging his fuel through the store. And, I, and if he couldn't do that, I was paying for his fuel. So I was paying for my fuel, his fuel, the rent, the electricity, the gas, um, the propane, the groceries everything. (laughs) I was, I was paying for everything and I wasn't even making that much money. I was making probably at this point, $10 an hour. And I was working four days a week, four or five days a week. Okay. I had at least one or two days off 
And I was paying for everything. I don't know how the hell I did that. Well, the credit card probably helped. <laughs> if I'm going to be honest, the two, I, I had three. I had three credit cards at this point and that helped. Kind of. But um, I was getting frustrated and I was getting so sick of it. And so I finally in October just threw hands. I was like, you know what? This isn't working for me. You need to get your stuff together. We're not going to get back together until you can make this work by yourself. So I told him I was only going to pay rent and electricity. Everything else was going to be on him. And um, I left. <laughs> I left. On the bright side, I wasn't living there full time. So I didn't have to pack anything up this time around. <laughs> but I had left. I left that asshole. I even left him. So still have it i don't think i do um i had in senior year of high school we took uh consumer economics and we had this little book that kind of helps you budget your life and helps you save money and know how to get through everything so i left it to him i was like read this seriously read it look at it it has good helpful hints on how to keep track of your money so you don't overpay on something or end up overpaying monthly and end up broke like, this is a good resource to have. Use it. And I left. My brother was supposed to get married the next week. So, or two weeks after that. So I broke up with him at, towards the beginning of October. We were apart for about two weeks. And then that next week, that uh, second, third week. Oh my God, the hiccups. The hiccups. The second or third week of October... My brother was getting married. We were apart for at least a week, maybe a week and a half. And we had already made the plans that, you know, um, I had a room at the hotel close to where my, my brother's venue, where he was getting married at. I already told him that, uh, you know, me and Ray were going. It was really late to have to cancel a lot of the stuff because if I canceled, I would have to stay with my dad and then they wouldn't get money because they, they had to have so many people use the rooms of the hotel in order to get full use of their deposit for that block. So like if you block hotel or rooms at a hotel for any reason, you have to block a certain amount and they have to be used. Or, you know, at least the majority of them had to be used. Otherwise, they felt like they wasted their money. You know what I mean? So I already said like, yeah, I'll take a room. I'll take, I'll take a separate room. It'll be me and Ray and we'll be fine. My dad was in the other room across from us. And it would have been really weird because I think that night before my brother's wedding, him and my dad stayed in the hotel room. And then my sister stayed with, or my sister-in-law, um, she stayed with her mom out here. And then they drove in together after all their hair appointments and stuff like that. Whatever. Anyway, we had already made all this deal and all this plans. And I was like, you know what? Come to the wedding. Maybe it'll be in. We'll go from after that. So he came to the wedding late, by the way. <laughs> he showed up the day before because, like, we were supposed to be there the day before. And then um, so we were supposed to do the rehearsal dinner and then um, stay the night at the hotel, get out the next morning, help set up, get changed, get dressed, attend the wedding, do the, re the reception, take everything down, and then go back to the hotel. So he was supposed to show up. The night before. And he showed up. God. He wasn't even there for the rehearsal dinner. He showed up. I think when we were coming back from the rehearsal dinner to the hotel. Distance might have been okay. Because my brother got married in Denver. And he was staying at his mom's house that weekend. <laughs> ah! <laughs> so... He was late driving 10 minutes from his mom's house to the hotel where we were staying at. God. Whatever. He At least he was on time for the wedding because he was there and I drove him there. <laughs> God dang it. But uh, we had a good time at the wedding. Um, we talked some stuff out. I don't think I moved back in yet. No, I didn't. But uh, I told him, I was like, you know. Keep, you know, you're still got to be responsible for all that stuff, whatever. End of story. So we came back from the wedding. He was still living up at the house. I was still living with my dad. And 
I think after a few months went by, we got back together, which, or a, like that another week went by and we got back together, which hmm, shouldn't have, that should have been the end of it. Here is the part that I talk about frequently in my friend group. It's a thing that was a big part of our relationship for longer than it should have been. In February of 2016, so he would have been 22, I would have been 21, we had an incident. So to start this whole thing off, I think I did uh, a mid-shift. So I worked from probably like 10 to 3 or 4. Came home. I was hanging out with my dad. I think I had plans that night to go to, because it was basically the day after Ray's birthday. And I had plans after dinner to go to Ray's house, to go to the house, to hang out with him for his birthday. I didn't do it the day of, like we was the original plan. Because basically I showed up, the house is a mess, and I spent most of the time cleaning up the mess, then hanging out with him, and he was in the garage. So, whatever. I was upset about that for whatever reason. But, uh, anyway. <laughs> um, so, I was supposed to go to his house, or to the house, I keep on saying his house. I was supposed to go to the house after I had dinner with my dad to hang out with Ray for his birthday. So I just finished dinner. We were watching, um, I believe it was Big Bang Theory, and I get a phone call. And I look down and I see it's Ray. I'm like, that's weird. He never really calls me. He mainly texts me. So I answer it. And he is so confused and upset that I can barely understand him. He has. He tells me he has no idea where he is. He has no idea what happened. He almost got hit by a car and he needs help. After asking him a series of questions, so basically I told him, I was like, okay, you got to calm down. Take a deep breath for me. All right, look around. Where are you? I don't know. I was like, can you see the house? And he's like, yeah, I see the house. I was like, okay, cool. At least I know kind of where you're at. I'm on my way. I start to, I tell my dad what happened, kind of what happened. I was like, yeah, something happened with Ray. I'm going to go see what's going on. I'll be right, I'll be back tomorrow as normal. He's like, all right. So I start, leave, I leave my house and I start heading up towards where we were supposed to be living. And I barely touched the highway to turn to, that goes up to the house when my phone rings again and I look down and it's Ray and I'm like, okay, cool. Maybe he has more information about what's happening. I pick it up. It's a paramedic from the local fire department. And what the fire, what the paramedic told me is, hey, so he wrecked his car. He was wandering in on the highway and almost got hit by another car, which is why we're here because they called 911 to say that somebody was walking on the highway. He it seemed, he's wet, so it appears that he had fallen into snowdrifts. Because remember, this is February in Colorado. We had a huge snowstorm that week, or that I think maybe like the day before, or something like that, or that day. It was a big storm, and it like left drifts everywhere. And he says, um, it looks like he had fell in some of the snowdrifts at the end of the driveway. Uh, it looks like his car is pretty much buried in the snowdrift. He's okay, but he appears to be really drunk. And I'm like, I'm on my way. As long as he's okay, I'm on my way. We'll figure all this out when I get there. Hang up the phone with the paramedic. I get there. And before I'm even half a mile away, I see flashing lights. And I'm like, crap. Something big happened. I roll up on the scene. There is a sheriff's car there. There is an ambulance and a fire engine. Now they send the engine on every car accident. Why? Because just in case the car catches on fire. All right. That's why they bring the engine. So I'm like, oh my God, what happened? I get out 
and I'm trying to figure out what's happening. So I'm like talking to some of the paramedics. I'm talk. I'm trying to talk to the sheriff who's there, and no one's really forthcoming with information. Okay, I was just on the phone with the paramedic who kind of told me what was happening, but they wouldn't tell me more than that. I look in the back of the ambulance and I see Ray, and he's talking to a sheriff, a sheriff's de- deputy, sheriff's officer, sheriff off. A sheriff's deputy, okay? Deputy. Jesus. <laughs> I I end up hanging around. I mean, this is like, you know, 7, 8 o'clock at night in the middle of winter. Do you know how cold it is outside after a snowstorm in the middle of the night? It's pretty cold. So I'm standing on the highway behind the ambulance hoping at some point someone's going to come out and tell me what's going on. It does. A sheriff ends up coming out, closes the door to the ambulance. I don't get a, I, I don't get a chance to talk to Ray at this point. And the sheriff tells me, he's like, yeah, he told me that um, you were coming over or something. And he was trying to clear the drifts in the driveway to make it safer to pass. And, he's, and he said, there is a concern. He says he left the door open and then he thinks the dogs got out. And I'm like, crap. Now, we only have, at this point, we only had one dog. Um, we had a Doberman named Duke. Very cute guy. I'll put a picture of him right there. I'll put a picture of him there. He's a very cute Doby. He was very fat, but he was very cute and he was very good. And I was like, crap, I can't leave him. Whatever. And so I tell him, I was like, okay, I'll take care of it. I walk. I don't know why I did this. I walked and our driveway is like a quarter of a mile. I, I, we mapped it out. I walk a quarter of a mile through knee-high drifts to get to the house. The door is, in, in fact, open. I walk inside because I'm like, I need to start somewhere. I'm like, he's Duke's normally a pretty good boy. He knows not to go too far. If Ray was messing around in his car, which at this point he was driving that big lifted Jeep that I was telling you about. Um, if he was driving around, messing around in the car, hopefully Duke just didn't go too far, right? I walk in and I start looking around and he's actually on the bed in our room or in his, in Ray's room at this point. Cause I wasn't living there just snoozing. So I'm like, cool. Make sure he has water. I close the door, close the outside door, turn off the lights, turn, close the outside door, make the quarter of a mile trek back through the snow to my truck still parked on the highway. <laughs> and everyone is gone except for the one sheriff car. And the sheriff, the deputy looks at, I kind of stopped it because he like rolled down his windows. I was walking by and I kind of look at him and he's, I was like, what's going on? He's like, well, they're taking him to jail. I'm like, cool. Awesome. <laughs> and he's like, there's, you know, he's like, uh, is there anything you need from me? I was like, no, the dog's taken care of. We'll figure this out later. He's like, all right. And he have a good night. And he drove off. I get in my car. I go to my mom's house. I tell her what's happening um complain there for a little bit and I'm texting with my cousin because at this point I'm close with my cousins remember and up until this point we're still doing family game night every other week every week whenever we can and so I'm texting my cousin I'm like man you won't believe what the fuck just happened and she's like well come over come over come over <clears throat> and at this point she's dating Tim Tim is an important piece of information to remember um, Tim eventually becomes kind of like uh, a friend of Ray's. They like the same things. They get along very well. And he's out there also friends with my other cousin. Um, I call him my twin cousin because <laughs> we were born in the same year. And uh, the, the three of them were really close knit. They were really good friends for a couple of years and until things went to shit. But whatever, we'll get to that later. Anyway, <laughs> I drive to my cousin's house. I tell them everything that's happening. And Tim was very nice and kind. And he offered to help me with the animals the next morning. Because remember, this is winter. The reason why we had that house is because Ray promised that he was going to feed the cows during the winter months. If he's in jail, who's going to do it the next morning? Me. (laughs) So, you know, he offers to help me feed the cows the next morning. I'm like, thanks. I'm going to need it because... I can't do that by myself. There's so there was a they had a lot of cows. They had a good herd of cows, and I'll show you a picture of some of them right here. I take this picture. I'm very proud of this picture. It was during I don't think it was that snowstorm. I think it was like the next year that I took this picture. But this is some of the cows, and they're very cute and they're very nice. 
<sighs> I miss having cows sometimes. Anyway, I digress. Ray calls me in the middle of the night and he's like, hey, this is how much the bond is. I was like, mm, no, I can't afford that. I think it was $1,000 uh, to $2,000 to get him out of jail. And I'm like, uh-uh, you're staying in there. There's no way I'm going to be able to pay that. He's like, all right, fine, that's fair enough. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm like, we'll talk about this later, you know? I'm, I've am i had it up to here with that night, you know? I didn't need any more. I stay the night, get up the next morning. We go take care of the cows. He gets out of out on bail. Because uh, I called a bail bondsman that next morning. He gets out. Um, we go home. And that's when I get the full story. And that's how we found out how much damage he did. It takes a lot <laughs> to get me to a point of irritated that I'll just ramble. And I'm at, at looking at this recording right now, I'm at an hour and 28 minutes. I may have to split this up into multiple episodes. <laughs> God. Anyway. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Anyway, we get back to the house. It's me and Ray. And uh, we're driving down the road to get to our house. And you see the Jeep buried in three feet of snow and a foot and a half of dirt. <laughs> it's buried. Okay? It is so buried. Um, Tim is following us in his truck behind us. And they end up pulling the Jeep out and basically everything but the back axle stays. <laughs> he broke, he, he, he demolished the drivetrain on this Jeep and anything after that was just trashed. This was the vehicle he was driving for months. I mean, I think he started driving it the fall before or the late summer before and in february just blew everything just it's gone it's toasted which awesome <laughs> if you're me um so we pull the jeep out we pull it back onto the property and you know he's he's laughing about it if i'm gonna be honest he's 100 percent laughing about it he's entertained about how much damage he did he not only destroyed his car, okay, he busted through one, two, one, two, three fences, which, I mean, to the point where the pole, the posts were on the ground. These were like wooden posts, old time wooden posts that he just broke. And he broke the jack off of the stack wagon. If you don't know what a stack wagon is, it's basically a wagon that you pull behind a tractor when you're baling hay, okay, after hay's been baled, and you basically scoop it up onto the trailer because there's this little port on the side of it where hay gets scooped up and then it gets slid over and it gets lined up and then it gets stacked. It's a really cool thing. Um, but he broke the jack. So the jack keeps the stack wagon up. So he broke the jack. So the stack wagon's like this. <laughs> so he broke that, which, you know, he was very sorry about. His mother paid to replace it. <laughs> God, I hate her. <laughs> I'm not worried about us getting back together, okay, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> but um, he broke that. And then he also, I think he broke through... Or he hit a tree. He almost, like, ran a tree down. I don't know how he did it, but he almost did it. But that was the damage that he did. The deal with the fences, he was supposed to fix them, which he did, with the help of his boss. Um, he fixed, he replaced this jack on the stack wagon with help from his mom. Fast forward a little bit longer. Probably about, like, a, about a month is when I think the court date comes. And with the county, you have, like, if you got arrested between this window of time frame, your court, uh, everyone who got arrested on this time or got a thing to appear in court, it was all on one day. So we show up in the at the county courthouse and there's this room where you have all these chairs of all these offenders and their lawyers. Ray had a lawyer that he got hired on. He was a civil um, civil lawyer that his dad knew. 
his lawyer, his dad knew um, from the bar, basic, you know, small town thing. And so here's the crux of the problem. On his arrest, when they brought him back to the jail, he blew in a breathalyzer a 0.18. A 0.18. A 0.18. That is more than twice the legal limit. (laughs) And he got charged with a DUI. His lawyer got it knocked down to a DWAI, which for those of you who are not lingual in this kind of language, which thank you, Ray, now that I, now I am, is driving while ability impaired. Okay. Which I am shocked that they did that because they could have gotten, he could have gotten screwed on that hard, but they went with it. So basically what he ended up getting was a year probation plus doing um the mad which is mothers against drunk driving he had to do a mad panel he also had to go to classes and therapy so classes and therapy what they basically do is they in the classes they kind of teach you basically i don't know what exactly what they teach i don't I didn't ask. I didn't really care at the time because I, it was an inconvenience to me. And I'll tell you why later. And in therapy, basically, you're supposed to take talk about um, addiction and coping with alcoholism or um, drug addiction and how to... Can, well, it's supposed to give you tools to deal with it. Um, the reason why this ended up being a... And he also was subjected to random UAs. I had to drive him to everything, (laughs) everything, to his job, to my job, back to pick him up. I also had to drive him to his mad course, his mad panel, to every single random UA because that's part of his probation. Every probation meeting, which is once a month, and his therapy and his classes, which thank God his therapy and his classes were at the same building. But I digress. And it's like once a week. And I think it was on Mondays that we had to do the classes. And what basically what and it wasn't long enough. It was like an hour long class. So it wasn't like I could. And it was like in Castle Rock. Right. So I drove a half hour there. And he would go to his class and I would just sit in the parking lot for an hour because I'm like, what's the point of driving all the way back home? And then having to drive back half an hour later or basically turn around and just drive back because his classes would be over. So I'm like, I would just, I'll just sit in the parking lot, which I did for all of his classes. I would just, you know, watch movies on my phone. I would, um, go over to like Target or to Walmart and I just walk around, buy something or whatever, um, something like that. And every, we would, I would time it so that way when we'd leave, we could have dinner in the parking lot before he'd have to go in. So we had a lot of KFC and Taco Bell. (laughs) (laughs) Because <laughs> it was right there by his classes. But, um, my God. That was an experience. A year later. <laughs> okay, so it wasn't like the most perfect year. We had our fights. We had our um, disagreements. There were some issues that came up throughout the entire year. Um... This, in 2017, at this point, he goes into what's supposed to be his final um, probationary meeting. And then that, he, at this point, he didn't finish his therapy. I think, I, I think he was almost done with his classes and he still had to do his therapy. So he told his probation officer, he's like, you know, I'm not quite done with everything yet. And the guy's like, no, it's fine. We'll just give you a, we'll extend it. At this point is when he decides that he's going to get an SR-22 insurance. He got a restricted license and he got a breathalyzer for his vehicle. And this is the truck that he bought from his dad. (laughs) God, I forgot. (laughs) He was driving illegally for a year. (laughs) 
So he let me drive him for like maybe six months. The rest, the other six months, if we didn't have to go somewhere where they knew he wasn't supposed to drive, he would drive himself. So a lot of times he drove himself for work because I couldn't, I couldn't just follow him around. I couldn't drive him to job, to job, to job, to job, to job and still have my job. So he was driving illegally. At that point, he had moved from the Jeep that he wrecked and he got a um, small F-150 from somewhere in Ellicott and then that engine blew and then he bought the truck from his dad, the, uh, the F-250 from his dad. And boy, howdy. <laughs> but uh, so he got an SR-22 to go with his restricted license because he couldn't have regular insurance on his car without having, um, with while having a restricted license. And you can only have a restricted license if you have a breathalyzer installed in the vehicle. So there was a lot of things that had to happen. So he did all of that, which he did by himself, which I'm amazed Um, a couple of months later, like one or two months later, he goes to his extended probation meeting. And during this time, the county that we are a part of was moving from paper files to computer files. And somewhere in that transition, the file for Ray's DUI got lost. He does not exist in the system anymore for having a probation for a uh, driving while ability impaired. He just, he's not in the system anymore. And he goes in and he comes out and he has this huge grin on his face. And I'm like, weird. Usually it's just normal stuff. And he comes, he pops in and he's like, uh, they lost my file. I'm no longer on probation. And I can already see where his mind is going to go. The restricted license is not mandated by the um, county. That is through the DMV, the state DMV, okay? The SR-22 is a requirement from the DMV. The breathalyzer is a requirement from the DMV. The therapy and the classes is also a requirement from the DMV, not from the county, okay? That's what I understood it as. So he didn't have to do his community service anymore, which he never started, and he didn't have to do the random um, UAs anymore. But he still had to finish his therapy. To this day, I don't think he ever did. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> um, so he's no longer on probation, right? At this point, this is kind of where we were having um, an issue of meeting and agreeing with what's acceptable and what's not. I, we both didn't want this to happen again. We were both underneath the um, agreement that, you know, you can't drink that heavily anymore. And basically what he had explained to me, and I forgot to tell you guys this in the previous section, what he told me, what, why he did what he did. He ended up drinking an entire bottle, like a mason jar of moonshine, <laughs> moonshine. He drank moonshine on top of beers And I think he even had some um, prickly pear vodka. He was trashed, (laughs) which at a 0.18 BAC, I'm not surprised, right? So we agreed. You can't drink anymore, at least not that heavily, which was kind of a blessing anyway, because if he was drinking whiskey, which was his favorite drink, he would become the most argumentative person on the face of the planet. There are two instances where he got in a fight with his mother and my cousins because he was drinking whiskey that night. (laughs) We had already banned him from whiskey before this event. And so um, I told him, I was like, you still can't, you can't indulge like you used to. You may have a breathalyzer, you may have a restricted license and everything, but you can't, even if I'm driving, you can't imbibe like you used to. And we had kind of come up to that agreement. However, he would still want me to drive him everywhere because if we went to like a restaurant or if we went to stock show, which is where his mom um, ran the chicken show, he would have me drive so that way he could have a drink, (laughs) which I feel like, okay, you're understanding now the designated driver aspect of this. However, you're not understanding the growing up part of this, but whatever, we're 22 at this point. So who cares? Um... Man. <laughs> uh, 
And after he, one of the big agreements that we had also made after his probation was over was that he would stop smoking pot. And the reason being is because we were blowing too much money everywhere else where we couldn't afford his habit. He was, he would willingly be stoned morning, noon, and night if he was allowed to. He was a, an avid smoker. He was a quote, he would call himself a connoisseur of marijuana <laughs> to the point of driving me absolutely bonkers. Um, but mm, semantics, right? Semantics. Semantics. <laughs> No, this is an important part. Okay. All right. In the summer of 2017, um, my twin cousin, okay, remember Tim and uh, my cousin and Ray being really close friends? Yeah. Here's where the problem begins. In the summer of 2017, uh, my cousin was living with Tim until... He got in a, f- he, there was some issue between Tim, uh, my cousin and Tim's mom or something. I don't remember. Um, but anyway, then anyway, <laughs> I'll edit that part out. Remember? Anyway, my cousin moved out of his mom's house and moved in with Tim and his mom. And then something happened there, some kind of altercation or fight or disagreement. I don't remember what. And so he was getting kicked out of that spot. And he didn't want to move back in with his mom. And I was like, hey, you can come move in with us. It'll be fine. Um, That way, you know, there's more people paying the rent. Should be a little bit easier on all of us. And, you know, we all get along pretty well anyway. So it should be fine. He ends up moving in with his girlfriend. His girlfriend does not have a job. She cleans three days a week. She is a house cleaner three days a week. Uh, with her mom's company. She never contributed to rent. She never contributed to groceries. She didn't help keep the house clean. She did nothing. And at this point, like my niece is born, like my niece is under a year old. I'm babysitting for um, my brother. So he has free childcare with somebody he trusts. Um, I'm working seven days a week at this point because everyone else who was working at the store besides me and my mom quit. So I'm working seven days a week. My mom's working seven days a week. We are basically, basically what happens is I will watch my, I'd watch my niece from morning till noon. When I went to the store, I'd take her with me. Um, my mom would take, uh, my niece and she'd come home and I would go to my shift at the store. That's how it worked five days, four days a week. Okay. Because we only had her four days a week. Um, her other grandma had her the other day and then the weekend she was with her parents. But, you know, that's kind of how it works. So I'd work, I'd get up at like 6.30 so I could be at my parents' house by 7 so I can get the kid from my niece, or my, so I can get my niece from my sister-in-law before she went to work. I'd stay with her all morning. At noon, I'd drop, I'd go to the store, switch off, and I'd work from noon until 9.30, go home, do the dishes, clean the house, make dinner, um for everyone besides including me so i'm making dinner for myself ray my cousin and his girlfriend okay that's four people who's already at the house one of which has been at the house all day (laughs) and has done nothing this is what her his girlfriend would do my cousin's girlfriend she would be in their room laying on her on their bed watching youtube all day (laughs) all day (laughs) She was 17, to be fair, whatever, but we're like 22. We're all, like, we were all born the same year. Ray was the oldest, my cousin was next, I'm the youngest. And then she was 17. But, you know, that's a whole another can of worms. But, you know, she never went to work, and so I had this huge issue. I'm like, why do I have to come home after being gone for 14, oh, more than that. Yeah, 14 hours a day. I'm gone for 14 hours. I come home from work and I have to do the dishes so I can make dinner. I have to do the dishes again so that way they're not sitting out all night and I have to do them again the next day. And then, you know, I have to make sure everyone can eat because I can't just make food for myself and um, Ray because, 
you know, that's not how it worked for some freaking reason. I was so upset. And, you know, granted, my cousin would contribute to the rent. Ray wasn't really contributing to rent because a lot of what he was making was going towards his whole DUI and DWAI issue. And, you know, she wasn't working often enough to be able to contribute anything. So I was very frustrated during this part of my life for this whole entire summer. And this lasted for three months. Three, oh. Yeah, it had to have lasted three months. It lasted three months. Uh, I'm going to have to cut this out because this is the wrong spot. This happened. February 2017, um, as a Valentine's Day gift, my Ray Gate surprised me kind of with a dog. It was a small little puppy. He was um, like three or four months old when we got him. Um, I named him Copper. He's a very sweet boy. Um, during this point, um, my niece was born and... Uh, we also, oh my God, I can't, I can't, I can't, because he makes me so mad. Um, my dad and I also drove down to Georgia to see um, my cousins on his side. Uh, he was invited. He decided not to go, which is okay, because we had like two two dogs, at, three dogs. We had three dogs at the time. We had Duke, we had Ransom, and we had Copper. Um, and they'll be pictured. I keep on pointing over there. And they'll be pictured over here somewhere. Um, the three of them, it might have to be two pictures cause I don't think I have a picture of all three of them together, but, um, we had three dogs at this point, And so it made sense if he wanted to stay home so he could take care of the dogs. Um, uh, so it's whatever, but, uh, you know, he was very detached when my niece was born and, you know, my niece, anybody who knows me, my niece, and my nephew are like the biggest parts of me. They are my life. I love them unconditionally. They are a big part of my life and I love them unconditionally. I I was there for every moment of my niece as she was growing up. I helped babysit her. I was, you know, four days a week I was with my niece and the same thing with my nephew when he was born. You know, I was with them a lot. And he, it took him until Thanksgiving of that year to meet her. <laughs> She was born at the beginning of the year. It took him to the end of the year to meet her for the first time. I was so upset. I was so distraught. Um, there's not a whole lot of important stuff that happens during this time. Um, we do get engaged in December of 2017. Now, this night was very odd for me. He w Very rarely do I come home from work and he would be like, get changed. We're going to go. We're going to go to dinner. Because that just not, wasn't something that he did. So we had already been talking about um, getting engaged or, you know, possibility of getting married, getting engaged and stuff like that. We were, talk we were talking about it. Um, we were talking about starting a life together. We were during this part of during 2017. Our relationship was at a point where I felt like the worst was behind us. And it just kind of worked out in a way that was good for all of us, I guess. <laughs> um, so I come home from work, right? And uh, I put all my stuff down and I walk into the living room and Ray's there and he's like, go get changed. Look nice. Make yourself pretty. Whatever you want to do. Make yourself feel, make yourself feel good. We're going to, we're going to, we're going out to dinner. And I'm like, all right, cool. You know, I'm not going to fight this. I don't have to cook dinner. I have to do dishes. Let's go. So I get changed. We hop into his truck and we start driving to um, Parker because we're going. I don't know exactly at this point. I don't know where we're going, but I know n now where we're going because we went there. We went to uh, Texas Roadhouse and the entire drive there he had. Usually he'll let me have control of the radio if we're driving somewhere, like if we're going um, a distance, like if we're going to Parker or further, you know, he'll let me have control of the radio. Unless there's a certain song that he wants to listen to, then he'll steal, steal it from me. And usually that's how he like starts off the trip. He has a song in his head or a song that he thought of that he really wants to hear. So he'll, you know, have control of the radio. And then after that, he'll let me have control of it. But he had like his phone plugged into the, um, to the auxiliary, right? He had the aux cord. And he's playing a certain playlist. 
And I know it's a playlist because I see the playlist on his phone. I can't really see what is on the playlist, but I know it's a playlist because I make play. I made plenty of YouTube playlists myself, but he has a YouTube playlist on his phone and I'm like, weird. And, you know, I think nothing of it. We're talking about, you know, our day and everything that we did. Now I'm talking about everything we did that was so adorable and cute. And he, you know, it took me until we were driving home to realize that this playlist was specially curated. He had taken every single love song that he knew, every single country love song that he knew that existed, any song that we enjoyed together, that we have fun with together, he made an entire playlist. This is the most effort he put into our relationship ever, ever. I am shocked. (laughs) I'm still shocked to this day. I mean, he made a coupon book, which I didn't find until like a year or so ago. And it like, it laid me out flat when I found this coupon book I was like oh yeah I forgot about this but this YouTube playlist was the most thoughtful thing that he ever put any kind of effort into and it worked <laughs> but uh <clears throat> it was a specially curated playlist and I didn't realize this until we were like halfway home and I'm like this is weird you know he I haven't had control of the auxiliary at all until this point and this is just a really weird circumstance. The thing is, the point, the bleh, the part that makes it so ironic and so thoughtful was because um, earlier that year on our anniversary, after because like we went to Denver, we had like a ho- we got a hotel room and we like um, hung around. Uh, what did we do? We went to a uh, the Denver Aquarium, and then we went to um, a concert that night. That was our anniversary night. And we stayed for like two days and, um, on the way home, he told me to stop by Walmart. I, this is the most hick thing you will ever hear me say. Okay. It dies with us. Um, he made me stop at Walmart and I'm like, why? And he's like, I just wanted to buy something. I was like, all right, fine. So we pull in and we get out and we start walking in and he goes straight to the jewelry section. I'm like, what do you want? And he's like, well, pick one. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, pick one, pick one out. Which one do you like? And I'm like, what? What are you talking about? He's like, I will buy a ring right now. Pick one. And so he made me pick out his my engagement ring, which he bought, and then we had sized. And I knew he had the ring four months. Guys, if you let us know that you have a ring, you ask for whatever happens next, okay? <laughs> this is the most ridiculous thing that I ever did. I knew he had the ring. Didn't know when he was going to propose. He was going to keep that a secret forever. Anytime we went to his mom's house or we drove somewhere and he had, I had control of it. I played every single marry me song I could find. (laughs) I drove him crazy with it until he finally proposed that December. Um, so we had the whole playlist and I'm like, this is so weird. And then I, it dawned on me what I had done before and he's doing the same thing to me. And I'm like, this is this is kind of fun. This is silly. I love this. You know, I'm, I'm a sucker for cliche, iron, irony, that cheesy stuff. I love that. I love that stuff. I'll eat that up all day. I don't care. And I pull back into the house or into the driveway, pull up to the house and he changes the song. And it is a personal favorite of mine that is now ruined forever. And it's, um, I cross my heart by George Strait. I absolutely was in love with this song. I know every single word of this song. And now every time I think of it, all I see is his face and it's kind of ruined and I'm very upset. But um, he plays this song. He gets out on his side of the truck, walks around, opens my side, pulls me out of his truck. We start dancing um, on the passenger side. The doors are all open. And this is like the middle of December. So it's, it's not cold, cold, but it's cold. You know, it's chilly. And so we're dancing and it hasn't snowed yet. So the ground's dry. Okay. It doesn't snow in December. No matter what people tell you, it does not snow in December in Colorado. It just doesn't happen. And after like the first verse in um, chorus, he gets down on one knee and he asked me to marry him. And I said, yes. (sighs) Biggest mistake of my life. That brings us to 2018, my niece's first birthday. Okay. This is a, this is a moment 
that kind of started to show me the kind of man he was. And I think this is at the, the point that my cousin moved in. So in 2018, at the beginning of the year, my niece has her first birthday. Big deal for my family because one, this is my brother's first kid. This is my parents' first grandkid. This is, um, you know, my sister-in-law's parents' first grandkid. You know, it has, there's, everybody's invited. It's not only just, you know, the immediate family where it's, it's my brother, my sister-in-law, my parents, um, her parents, okay, uh, my sister-in-law's parents, um, her grandparents, okay, and their, her aunt and uncles, okay, my sister-in-law's, uh, um, brother, myself, and my parents, and Ray was invited, okay, that is how many people were invited to, this is like a tight family thing, this is a very important thing, because this is like the first kid, well, I guess it wasn't her first child, not my sister-in-law, um, my sister-in-law's mother's first grandkid, but whatever. It's, it's a big deal because this is my, this is their first child together and this is their first birthday with their first child. You know, this is an important milestone. <laughs> um, so I had gotten to the habit because I've realized that if you don't continually remind him, Ray will forget that there's a, an important thing happening. So I told him like a month, um, And then every week, like a month before, and then every week since then, and then like the week leading up every day, a week leading up, I reminded him like, hey, her birthday's coming up. Her birthday's coming up. Her birthday's coming up. Her birthday's coming up. Are you going? And he told me every time, yes, I will go. I'll be there. I'm like, okay, cool. Day of, um, I tell him, I was like, don't forget her birthday's, uh, her birthday's today. It starts at this time. I can only be there for like an hour because I have to work later because still only me, myself, and the owner of the store is, or me, my mom, and the owner of the store is still working at the gas station. (laughs) So, you know, I can't, we can't just shut it all down and I can't switch with my boss because she was like, I don't know where she was. She was doing something. But, um, it's like, I think it was like a weekend. She didn't work weekends. Um, But anyway, I was like, don't forget, her birthday's today. I can only be there for an hour. I have to go relieve my mom so she can come up and do the birthday thing. And we'll be, in, you know, after that, I'll be fine. What was that? I don't know what that was. Anyway, um, so I show up and he's not there. And I'm like, where are you? Where are you? Are you still coming? What's happening? The party's already started. And he's like, I'm on my way. He shows up like 10, 15 minutes late. Whatever, not a big deal. He finally gets out of his car, makes his way into the house, and he's sitting there and he's on his phone. Okay, whatever, at least he's there. It's more effort than he's shown in the last year to, to support my niece. So I'm like, okay, this is fine, whatever. We are in the middle of singing happy birthday to my niece. I am taking a video of my niece. I'm taking pictures and I'm taking video, okay, of everybody singing happy birthday of her looking at her little smash cake. She's all excited. She's happy. She burns herself in the candle, by the way. Um, and at the end of the song, there's a notification on my phone of a text from Ray. I'm like, that's weird. If he wanted to tell me something, I'm right here in the room. Why didn't he just tell me? So I'm like, this is weird. So I open up the text. It wasn't even supposed to be for me. It was supposed to be for my cousin. Because remember, my cousin moved in. And my cousin, Ray, and Tim are close. They're close friends. They're buds. All right. I read this message and it says, and this still ticks me off. I don't know how long I'm going to be. Um, they're taking, this party is taking forever. They just now started doing cake. Don't they understand that I have places to go, people to see, and money to spend? I was livid. I read that. I whipped around and I looked at him and he looked at me confused because I'm like pissed, right? I'm decently pissed. Do I have, let, let me know. Do I have a right to be pissed? <laughs> and if my following reaction was too much, let me know in the comments. I want to know. I want to know your thoughts. So <laughs> I can't. 
<laughs> I whip around and I'm so mad that it's written on my face, okay? I'm pretty sure if looks could kill, I would be in jail for murder right now, okay? I'm just putting that out there. I look at him. I end the video and I walk over to where he's sitting on the armchair in the living room. And I'm like, if you don't want to be here, leave. Well, that's not what, if you don't want to be here, fucking leave. That's not what, if you don't fucking want to be here, fucking leave. If you don't want to be here, I don't want you here. My brother doesn't want you here. And my niece doesn't need you here. Fucking leave. I made a scene in the middle of my niece's birthday, kicking his ass out because of the shit that he sent me instead of my cousin. And I don't know if he was, if that was an accident or if it was on purpose, but I laid the rule there. I was like, I can't believe you fucking just did that. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? My niece's first birthday is forever ruined. And I might have had a hand in that. That's fine. But what the fuck? If you didn't want to be... Th- I asked if you wanted to go. I didn't say you had to. He, I didn't. I never said he had to go. Ever. I said, hey, my niece's birthday is coming up. Do you want to go? Yeah, I'll go. All right, here's the information. A week later. My niece's birthday is coming up. Do you still want to go? Yeah, I'll go. All right, here's the information. For weeks! Oh, my God. So we have a huge fight about that. Um, so, you know, and here's, and then, and here's, <sighs> we'll cover that in the next segment. <laughs> this is going to be a big sem- segment, guys. I am so sorry. All of this happened, the following happened over the summer of 2018. Okay. We are engaged, Right. We had decided to get married in September of 2019. Okay, 2019, we we're supposed to be married in September. Okay, that was the plan. He refused, absolutely refused to take part of any wedding planning. If I asked him his opinion about anything, he couldn't care less, which is fine because he's a guy, whatever. However, <laughs> Here's where the issues started, okay? Um, We were supposed to get, like, best men and everything, and he had, you know, my cousin and Tim down, and he also wanted, um, I'm going to name him. I don't fucking care. He also wanted Mario and Lucky to be his best men, which is fine because I had my other two cousins and um, a couple other my friends to match, right? I wanted it to be even. Um. We couldn't land on a venue. And I, I mean, in order for him to get to the venue, he was late all the time. Remember when I said about um my niece's birthday, how he was late? Yeah. Um at this point he started to not show up, right? Um we were looking at a couple of venues and he I asked if he wanted to go. He'd say, "Yeah." I'm like, "Okay, here's where we're meeting and this is where you need to be." And he would just not show up. But there's some things that happened before that. Over the summer, as I'm planning my wedding and trying to get ideas from him, he's not budging. He quits his job with Bob. Okay. That's the catalyst. That's the, that's the thing that starts it. It's not the catalyst. It's the thing that starts it. He was getting frustrated because he still wasn't making partner. He wasn't um, a partner in a company. He wasn't getting uh, his commissions like he was supposed to. So he decided he was going to quit, which is fair because I was tired of hearing him bitch about it. And I was like, it just sounds like you need a new job. So he quit and he was he had an interview with my um, cousin's company that he was working for. He was like working for like a pipeline company or something like that. And my cousin set up an interview for him with that same company. It would be with a, with a different crew, but at least he had an interview. He showed up for the interview and he had the interview and he got the job. He just refused the job. This is what he took over that job. This job would have paid a lot of money and that would have been fine. I mean, he they would have, they would have had a ride. He would have, he didn't have to spend a whole lot of money on gas. They could have went halvesies, which would have been fine. But uh, what he ended up doing was our friend Tim, he was living in Hugo at the time. And if you don't know where Hugo is, it's out in the bumfuck nowhere. All right. It's off of I-70 in the middle of nowhere. 
Um, it's about an hour as well from where we were living at the time. He decided he was going to take it. Uh, Tim was, anyway, Tim was living in Hugo and he was working under the table for a flooring company. So his, like, that boss was paying them under the table. Oh, that bring, oh, there's so much that happens in Hugo. I can't wait to tell you guys what happened in Hugo. All right. Um, so Ray quits his under the job table to skip over a really good paying job to another job that's being paid on the table that he ends up getting screwed out of, but spoiler alert. Mm. Anyway, so um, he decides that instead of driving to Hugo every night, he was just going to stay at Hugo during the week and then come back for the weekend, right? That's fair, whatever. And so I would take my days. Um, I had, I'd open the store on Wednesday. So I'd be up at 4.30 in the morning on Wednesday. Clo- I'd be at the store until noon. And then after that, I'd go home. I would um, grab the dogs because at that point, the dogs were still staying with me. And we had three. Ransom went back to Brenda and because he was originally Brenda's anyway. It was just, that was, that's a whole mess. And we ended up in custody of this little Shiba Inu. His name was Dash and he was an asshole and I hated him. I still hate him to this day. Anytime I see a Shiba, I just, I can't. I freaking can't. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, we had Duke, we had Copper, and we had Dash. And so after I get off work on um, Wednesdays at noon, I would go get the dogs. Um, I'd grab some overnight things and I'd drive out to Hugo and I'd spend the night with um, Ray out in Hugo at Tim's house that he was renting. Uh, And then I would drive back the next morning because I didn't have to be there until noon the next day. So I'd take the dogs with me back home, get them set up in the house, um, make sure the other animals were taken care of, and then I would go to work. So that was every week, Wednesdays and Thursdays. That's what I did. Um... At this point, my cousin and his girlfriend that originally moved in broke up. Um, He started seeing Tim's sister, who Tim's sister, I'm just going to name her, Vicky and Tim were not on good terms at this point quite yet. They were having issues, whatever, I don't care. But uh, he was kind of seeing, my cousin was kind of seeing Vicky. So Vicky more or less kind of moved in with us, which was a thrill in and of itself because we had already been threatened at this point that we were going to be evicted. If we didn't clean up the property, we were going to lose the house. So (laughs) guess whose stuff was spread out to kingdom come? That would be Ray's and my cousins. And I told them repeatedly, I'm like, you guys got to clean this shit up because they had all their vehicles, all their car parts, all the trash was all theirs. I wasn't home often enough to make this mus- much of a mess. And any mess I didn't make would be on the inside, which wouldn't be cause to evict us because it wasn't unlivable. So there's that. Um, but uh, we got the notice that we were going to be evicted if we didn't get, get things in order. I told Ray, I told my cousin, and then um, we were working on it. And... There was tension happening between me and Ray and my cousin um, because he was falling short on his part of the rent, um, plus everything that happened with his girlfriend and now with Vicky. I, we were just I couldn't I couldn't take it. <laughs> I this is the most stressed I had been in my life was during this summer. Um. Before they had broken up, my cousin and his girlfriend were going to go on a cruise and they were going to take a mutual friend of theirs um, with them on this cruise. It was like a cruise with her family. He ended up going anyway after they broke up and it was an awkward affair, whatever, yada, yada, yada. Vicky ended up staying at the house. And (sighs) my God, (laughs) I almost lost my shit. So the way it happens is there's four doors that go into this house, one of which is located into the bedroom that he was staying in, one was into the laundry room, one was into the entryway, and then the other one was into the be- the closet of the other bedroom. The other, That bedroom door, that closet door that went outside didn't work. So there was literally only three ways to enter the house. So 
what they had done was they had put the big screen TV in the entertainment center against the door front on the inside of their bedroom um, that leads into the living room. That's where they put the door. So we couldn't go in and they locked the other door. And this is what pissed me off. They had all my plates. They had all my stuff, everything in that room. And they effectively locked me out of it. So my retaliation was I locked all the other doors so that way they had, they couldn't get in to use the bathroom. They would have to move all their shit to be able to get in to use the bathroom or get something from the kitchen, you know, or anything from the living room. They had to, you know, unbury themselves. So I did that. She kicked in the door. Vicky kicked in my front door, effectively broke it. <laughs> I was mad. Couldn't use that door anymore because we had to block it shut because I couldn't fix it because we were in the process of being evicted. Yes, we were being evicted a month we were given a notice, and then a month later, we were given final notice. <laughs> so we were being, we were in the process of being evicted. I had already let everybody know, like, hey, we're being evicted. We got to get out. And this, of course, all happened when my cousin was on a tr- cruise trip with his ex-girlfriend and her family, and I'm stuck by myself because Ray was in Hugo with Tim, so it was just me and Vicky at the house. We threw down. I mean, this little rat faced bitch. I'm going to call her every name of the sun. She already knows I hate her. It's nothing new. Um, <laughs> she, We got in such a huge fight. She told me that um, I had broken her computer and that a lot of stuff was missing. And I was like, I didn't, I didn't go in there. All, the only reason why I went into that room was to get my shit out. And I did. Anything that was broken is because the room's a fucking mess, okay? There was more things on the floor than anywhere else. I can't, I couldn't believe it. And so I'm like, if I stepped on the computer, it's not my fault because it was underneath something. It was a part of the floor at that point, okay? It's not like there was a way around it. So, you know, we got in this huge fight and I was like, okay, that's it. You know, either you need to get my cousin's shit out of here and your stuff as well and leave or I am going to effectively throw everything out and then you have to deal with it. So she ended up moving herself and my cousin out of the room. I packed up the rest of the house by myself. At this point, I was 100% by myself because one night I had went to visit Ray and Hugo and he had decided that he wanted to keep the dogs. <laughs> so he kept the dogs in the house at Hugo and I was by myself in a ranch house, off of a highway, by myself. Packing a house, by myself. <laughs> I was so mad. And his, his reason that he couldn't come back to help me was because his truck that he had spent $6,000 on, which in reality he probably only spent maybe $600 on because his mom paid for everything else, um wasn't working. I guess it had a death wobble and he was terrified of the death wobble, which is fair, but it's like, dude, we're being evicted. You have a garage full of stuff that I don't know what to do. We need to be out in like a month. You need to get here. I don't know what you want to do with all your mechanic stuff, all your tools, your lifts, everything. I don't know what you want to do with it. Plus there's all the vehicles that are still here. What do you want to do with all those? Plus the, you know, your horse is here. What do you want to do with him? Like, you need to help me, (laughs) you know? I was irritated at this point. I was very irritated. Um, But, you know, we got, I got us moved out. We stored everything at his dad's um, house and his barn. Um, He went back to Hugo and I was still making, you know, weekly trips out to see him. One of these trips, one of these memorable trips, do you remember when I told you that he agreed to stop smoking pot. Do you remember that? Do you remember that? I do. I remember that. (sighs) One of these trips to Hugo, we were, I think he had come home um, for a weekend. Uh, I think it was like bad weather or something. It was like a week of bad weather. And so he had to come home because they couldn't work. I don't remember why. Um, So he had come home and we were packing and, um, it was, the Lincoln County Fair was happening and they had like a, um, demolition derby. They had a demo derby happening. 
at the um, fair. And we're like, oh, that'd be fun. You know, something to get our minds off of everything and relax a little bit and hang out with some friends. And so we drove to Hugo. And once we got to the house that Tim was staying in, Ray had gotten out of the car, went into the house. I was like changing. I think I was taking my belt off or something or I was changing um, my shoes. I don't remember what I know. I remember I was having an issue and I was uncomfortable for the entire drive and I was changing. Um, I walked into the house and I didn't see anybody in the living room. So I went to the bedroom where um, the hallway where there's like two bedrooms. There's like two bedrooms off the hallway. There's the one that Ray was staying in. and There was the one that Tim was staying in. I looked at the one that Ray was staying in and it's empty. I look over to see the one that Tim was staying in and Ray's laying on his bed smoking, taking a huge hit off of a pipe. And I just stand there. We lock eyes. I just turn, t- turn, t- uh, turn tail and I leave the house. I hear footsteps behind me. Who do you think is following me? I'll give you a second to guess. If you guessed Ray, you would be wrong. Tim is following me out the house. He follows me all the way to the truck. And the entire time he's apologizing profusely. He's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't know, I didn't know. I didn't know that you guys made this deal. And I'm like, that's not the point. You're not Ray's keeper. He knew the deal that we made. He was aware of the deal that we made. And he broke it effectively right in front of me. So nothing that you're going to say is going to change it. I drove out of the Hugo so fast. They went to the demo derby without me. He went home or I think Tim dropped him off home. I don't remember how Ray got home. Um, but it was a, it was a saga. <laughs> uh, and then come to find out <laughs> there's so much shit that happened. During this time as well, uh, Gary, Ray's dad, had back surgery. He's been having back issues for a while. He finally had back surgery during this time. Um, I made a plan with Ray to go visit his dad because, you know, I'm marrying into this family. I'm going to be nice. Not to mention my my own dad was just in the hospital for a dirt bike accident, you know. I'm going to – I know how nice it would be if somebody helped out. So I was like, hey, I'll go, I'll go visit your dad with you. We go up and we visit with him. We come back down. Um, <clears throat> how Ray got there was in the van, the company van with Tim because they were at a job and they finished the job and they were coming to the hospitals to visit his dad. Um, they were hanging out in the parking lot waiting for Ray. And so we get down and we start talking because, you know, we're still friends at this point. I'm not horribly mad. I was just really upset that Ray broke his promise. He said he wasn't going to do it again. Whatever. We moved on. Um, we get back from, we get back down to the parking lot and, um, you know, they're parked next to my truck and we're talking and I hear this story come out of Tim's mouth and I'm very concerned and confused because I'm like, I don't remember this story ever happening in my presence. I want to know. So here's a, here's a little side story about Tim. Tim was living with two girls at the time as well as Ray. Okay. He had two girlfriends. One is named Hannah. I don't care. I'll name you. And the other one is named Allie. Okay. Hannah was the first girlfriend that they were living together. Um, they broke up. Hannah moved, moved out for a little bit when, (laughs) when my cousin and his girlfriend broke up, she, I guess her name's Allie. (laughs) I outed it when my cousin and Allie broke up, she moved in with Tim and started dating him. Then Hannah had issues with wherever she was and she moved back in. So there was at least, you know, two females living with two guys. All right. And while before he started dating Allie, Tim was having questions about Hannah. And so they're telling me, they're talking about the story that happened. And I'm like, when did this happen? Like, oh, this was, you know, when Hannah was living with us, when I was with Hannah. And I was like, odd. What happened? And my fiance, at this point, my fiance, we are getting married in little over a year, tells me this story. He tells me that they, uh, that Tim was having doubts about Hannah's faithfulness to Tim, which is a big laugh because Tim is not faithful at all. He changes girls like he changes 
socks. Okay. It's insane. Um, but, uh, anyway, <laughs> he was having questions about Hannah, having doubts about her, wasn't sure if she was being completely faithful and honest. So they had devised this plan. And what this plan was, was that they were all going to go out to the bar in Hugo. And Hannah was starting to flirt with Ray a little bit. And he had told Tim and Tim was kind of upset about it. And then they became, they decided to do this plan where Ray would play along and flirt back to see how far Hannah would go. And I'm, I'm baffled. I am so confused because the entire time that me and Ray had been together, he told me his worst nightmare that he ever had was he was working in the garage. He looks over and in the window, in the living room, he sees me and another guy. And I'm like, that's never happened. He's like, no, no, no. It's just a, it's just a nightmare that I have. And I'm, I'm like, okay, this guy who's completely terrified that I'm going to leave him just told me that he's going to flirt with his best friend's girlfriend to see how far she'd go while he's engaged to someone else. <laughs> uh, I couldn't. I lost it. I was, I was mad from the get-go. I'm like, are you serious? I came out here to visit your dad. I'm doing a nice thing for your dad, for you. And you tell me that you were kind of not cheating on me just to see how faithful your friend's girlfriend is that's not okay that is not okay and so you know i got the whole thing about oh don't don't be so uptight it didn't mean anything nothing actually happened i'm like i don't care if anything happened or not is that really what okay mm. am i overreacting tell me in the comments if i'm overreacting because i feel like sometimes i am and sometimes i'm like no i was completely justified and the reason why I felt like I was completely justified, I'm going to follow up with this another quick story. I'm so sorry. There's, I told you a lot happened in Hugo. <laughs> there was a lot that, there's a lot of stuff that went down in Hugo. Um, one of which was, this was when Allie was living with Tim. Um, this was before Hannah moved back. I had went and did my usual weekly visit and um, I spent the entire time in Ray's room watching a movie I didn't even like because we were supposed to watch the movie together. This is, you know, it was one of Ray's favorite movies. We were watching it on the bed together. We had the dogs and then he had gotten up at some point to go do something. And then I ended up on my own for like an hour and a half. And I'm like, that's weird. And so I was like, well, he'll be back. He's probably just talking. He's doing something. He'll be back. The movie ends <laughs> and I get up to go see where he's at. And he's sitting on the couch in the living room watching a movie with the people he's live he's been living with. <laughs> and I'm like, what's going on? And they're like, well, Tim's had a rough week and you know, I just want to make him feel better. And so we've been hanging out here. And then I was like, all right, fair enough, I guess. And I had gone to go grab my phone or something. And as I'm coming back, he's like tickling Allie in the corner of the kitchen. Ray is. <laughs> he's tickling Allie and making like making her squeal and wiggle and move and he's laughing and I'm like I came up here to see you because we haven't seen each other in a week because you don't come see me I have to come see you and then you leave me in your room for an hour and a half to tickle your best friend's girlfriend this is where some things started to like add up and this should have been one of those times where I'm like okay that's it we're completely done no more but I was like, you know what, whatever. They're, you know, maybe they're having a rough week. You know, maybe they're having a hard time of it. Whatever. Benefit of the doubt. Move on. Should have ended it there. The uh, last thing that happened that is important details. And I'm just going to leave it at this. My birthday's in October. And Ray had texted me. He's still living in Hugo at this point. Ray had texted me and he's like, what do you want to do for your birthday? And I was like, I don't know. I don't care. And he's like, I got something planned for you. I was like, well, you got to let me know what days to ask off because, you know, otherwise this is not going to happen. And I was like, should I just ask the day of, the day before, both, day before, day after, you know, what days should I ask off? And he's like, do the day of and the day before. And I'm like, okay. I asked those days off. And I get a text message that day 
or the day before that day that I was supposed to like the plans were supposed to happen. And he's like, Oh no. <coughs> um, I get a call. He calls me and he says that, um, the job they're running late on a job won't be able to make dinner. But you know, if you head out, um, Allie will be there and Hannah will be there. And then, you know, we'll see you tomorrow. And I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> I'm not driving out to Hugo on my birthday. <laughs> Are you insane? Especially if you're not going to be there. You know, this is my birthday. This is my day. I'm not going to drive all the way out to Hugo, which I do every week, which I was planning on doing that week anyway. That Wednesday, I was planning on going out to Hugo because my birthday was on a Monday. And I'm like, I'm not going to drive all the way out to Hugo twice this week. It's not happening. And so he's like, well, you know, we got all this stuff for your, to make you a birthday dinner. And I'm like, dude, do you not hear me? I'm not driving to Hugo on my birthday. What the hell? If that's an overreaction fine but just so you know since he moved out to hugo the only times he came home was when he needed something from the garage when he needed to get something from his garage that's when he would come home and then he would pack it up and then leave he wouldn't stay he would stay long enough to get it loaded onto the truck or the trailer or whatever he was hauling on his truck with the death wobble and drive back to hugo I was pissed. <laughs> I was pissed. Then at this point, this is when the friendship between me and Tim ended. Because he ended up texting me back saying that I was so um, high on my high horse and that I couldn't make concessions or uh, uh, consult, uh, what is it, uh, compromises with Ray. Because the reason why he's um, he can't come is because he's working on his truck because his truck has a death wobble and that's how that's why um he's having issues trying to get everything done so he can get moved and i'm like i don't care i was like you're not hearing me it's my birthday mine the day i was born this day is supposed to be mine and i'm not gonna do whatever i i'm not gonna do something i don't want to do if i don't want to drive after hugo I'm not going to, especially since the only way he comes out from Hugo is to get something for him, not for me. He doesn't come home to visit me ever, never. He never came back to visit me. He just came back to grab something from the garage. That should have been the, t that should have been the end of it there. I should have broken off there and been done, but no. This brings us to 2019 okay <laughs> that's how far we've gotten <laughs> we're at 2019 <laughs> uh, in between the last sequence and now or segment and now ray quit his job with the flooring company he terminated his friendship with tim and he moved back in with his mom so that meant he lives in Denver and I'm still with my parents, right? Um, my niece at this point would be two years old. My nephew's a year old. He's never met my nephew, if you want to believe that. He never met him. Um, the reason why he never met him is because he was supposed to come down to my brother's house for Thanksgiving of uh, 2018. And he said he would. Uh, ended up being unreachable the day of. 
And I didn't hear back from him until the next day when he told me that he overslept and he didn't want to come in. So he didn't meet my nephew. Um, the entire time he was living in Denver, we were having issues planning the wedding. I had to go and physically pick him up so that he would make the appointments that he wanted to be at. Like for the um, officiant, I had to pick him up. The venue, my dad and I had to pick him up. The reason why my dad went is because my dad was paying for the venue. <laughs> okay. He was playing, he was paying for quite a bit of it. Um, man. Mm. <laughs> I can't. I'm about to cry. <laughs> um, he missed all the meetings with our wedding planner. Um, some of them were accidental. One of them, which was, uh, intentional. He, would if he was supposed to be at a meeting and I would like call him and I'm like hey I you know I would call him and he would never respond and so I, I, I ended up texting him like hey are you coming like what's happening and he's like oh I forgot or he would wait until after the plans were like the meeting was over before he would respond to me he was the worst at co communicating um hmm. sorry I'm checking my notes making sure I don't miss anything when we finally found a venue that we both liked, um, this was the one that my dad and I went to pick him up to go see. Um, he did pretty good during during the initial part of it. I would keep looking at him like, you know, what are your thoughts on this? What are your, what are your opinions on that? Is this something that we want to do? And he never really had an opinion, but we ended up choosing it anyway. I really liked it, so that's why we ended up picking it on the drive back to drop him off at his mom's house. The entire time it was like, it was like, it was a big inconvenience the entire drive back. And I was close, like he was sitting in the, I'm about ready to cry myself <laughs> mainly because like my dad is such an, was an awesome human being. He was such a there for you human guy. That's who he was at his core. Um, I was sitting in the passenger seat of my dad's car. My dad was driving. Ray was in the back. And we're driving back to his mom's house to drop him off. And the entire time he was just talking about how he's running late for this and he's running late for that. And he really needs to go. And how it was a big inconvenience to go see a place where he's supposed to get married in a few months. Right? I was close to tears. <laughs> We dropped him off. I was silent all the way home on the ride with my dad. I was just quiet and I was trying not to talk, trying not to break down and cry. I mean, it that hurt. Like, this is something that you're supposed to get excited for. You know, this is a wedding and I'm asking you your opinion. And the only thing that you have to say to me is, wow, I can't, I really need to get going. I have to go do this. Bye. And it's like, really? All right, fair enough. I was so mad. And we had, oh God. I'm not going to get into that. We're just going to skip that segment. It's fine. It's not important. It's May 2019. One of the last few things that we had to plan was catering. And I had to find a special caterer because I had people in my family who were allergic to peanuts, who were vegetarian. So I had to find someone who could like fit that balance. <clears throat> and I found this caterer. And instead of going to where the caterer is, they would go to your house. And so I was like, well, I myself am here. I don't think you'll, you would want to go that far. And they're like, yeah, no, 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 no. We can't go that far. I'm like, okay, well, um, here's my fiance's mom's house. We can meet you there and we can do the tasting and then we'll go from there. And they're like, yeah, that sounds good. We'll be here on what day. And I was like, well, this day and this time, if that's good for you. And they're like, yep, that's good. I let, uh, Ray know. I'm like, Hey, this is the time and the day that the caterer is coming they go to your house so if your mom's okay with it we can I have it scheduled for her house because they won't come out to where I'm at and he's like yeah that should be totally fine and I was like okay 
This is the time. This is the place. Do you want to be there? And he's like, yeah, I'll be there. I was like, okay, cool. Day before, I let him know. I'm like, don't forget. Tomorrow, at this time, the caterer is coming. We're going to do the tasting. And then we'll decide if this is the caterer we want to use for our wedding. And he's like, all right, cool. I'll be there. I leave town. So I remember, I'm an hour away. I live an hour away from Ray's mom's house, from Brenda's house. Okay. I leave town. Um, I hop onto I-25 and I send him a quick text. I'm like, Hey, just let you know, I hit I-25. I should be about half an hour away. And he's like, okay, cool. I dip down to the Home Depot. Just, you know, basically like, it's like a five minute drive from his mom's house, give or take maybe 15, 10 to 15. Uh, we'll say about 10 to round it off. I don't really know exactly. It's been, a, it's been a while. And that's about a 10 minute drive from his mom's house. I'm like, okay, I have like 30 minutes to get from where I'm at to his mom's house. He's at Home Depot. We should be able to get there at the same time, right? So I show up, I roll up, and he's not there. And I'm like, is he still at Home Depot? So I go to call him. It goes straight to voicemail. I'm like, great, (laughs) great. So I send him a text. I'm like, hey, I'm here. Where are you? Never got a response. Uh, About five minutes later, the caterer rolls up. Now, mind you, I am in my future mother-in-law's house by myself. I am by myself in my future mother-in-law's house. Weirdest thing ever (laughs) that I ever experienced. But um, I'm glad she trusted me at that point. I guess I could have done some really good damage. But um, I see the caterer pull up. I call him real quick. Go straight to voicemail. So I text him. I was like, hey, the caterer is here. Where are you? Are you on your way? What's going on? Caterer comes in. I still don't have a response. I'm like calling him repeatedly. I'm like, I'm so sorry. My, I don't know. He said he was going down to the store. He should be right back. And I'm like calling him repeatedly. Finally, he picks up the phone. And he's like, hey, what's going on? And I'm like, uh, hello? <laughs> the caterer is here. We're supposed to be tasting food for our wedding. Where are you? And he's like, well, I'm in the checkout. It shouldn't take much longer. I should be there shortly. I was like, okay, cool. We late wait like 10, 15 minutes. The caterer, I can see on her face, is getting annoyed because I'm wasting her time. And so after like the 10 minutes pass, I call him again, go straight to voicemail. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm about to lose my mind. And I think she sees it that I'm getting frustrated myself that this isn't planned. I'm not doing this on purpose. We're kind of a victim of Ray's stupidity at this point. So she's like, do you still want to, do you still want to try it? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll try it. And it's really good food. It is so good. If I could have that again, I would. <laughs> it was so good. Um, and I thought, I'm like, this is delicious. I was like, I think this is what we want. And uh, she, and she's like, well, do you want me to put the second plate in a to-go? That way he can try it and you can do your final decision. I was like, yeah, that's fine. So I help, I scrape everything off the plate into a to-go box. She cleans up or picks up her stuff heads out and gets in the car and leaves. It's been an hour since I showed up. Okay. I showed up. I think we were supposed to be there at one. It is now like 10, 15 to 10 minutes before two. Okay. I put the stuff in the fridge. I close the door. I stand in the driveway and I wait just five to 10 more minutes just to see if he'll just show up. He doesn't. I call him. No response. So I text him. I said, Hey, cater is gone. There's a a sample of, or there's a plate for you in the fridge of what we had. Try it and let me know. I'm like frustrated and mad. I stew all the way home. (laughs) And I'm like, man, maybe, maybe he has a reason for missing it. You know, I'm, if this was just an isolated event, I don't know if I would have gotten as, would have gotten as mad as I did. Um, but this is, this had been an ongoing thing. Where trying to get him where he was supposed to be on time was like trying to catch air. It was so impossible. (laughs) And so I get, I finally get home. I'm like, I'm late for work at this point because I was supposed to be at work at two or at three. And with rush hour, I got to work at like 3.15, 3.30. My mom had to cover for like 45 minutes while I got home. 
And so I'm telling her, I'm like, I can't believe, I told her what happened. I told my mom, I was like, I can't believe he did that. And uh, finally, I get him on the phone. Uh, like, this is after work. I finally was able to get him on the phone and I'm talking to him. And I'm like, what the hell? Where were you? What were you doing? And he's like, well, um, mom wanted a shed put up in the backyard and I had to go get parts from Home Depot. And I'm like, this isn't even an emergent thing. I was like, here's my issue. Here's my entire issue. He went to Home Depot to get parts for a shed. He lives with his mom. He has no job at this point. I am the one with the job. Okay. I am the one that visits once a week. Okay. I already expended. I was already there twice. I was there on um, the Wednesday before. I was there on Monday and I was supposed to be there that next Wednesday. I was going to make two trips to see him. Oh no, it was Friday. So I was just there on Wednesday. So this was like Friday. Okay. I was, I'm still so, I'm, I'm peeved, peeved at this because he lives 10 minutes away from the Home Depot and he's telling me that he went to go get some screws to put together the shed for his mom. And I'm like, this was for the middle of the day. It's not like this was the first thing in the day or the last thing of the day. This was in the middle of the day. Okay, I know for a fact he gets up at 8. He knew when this was happening. Because I told him the night before, the morning of, and when I left. He knew. Okay, he knew exactly when this was happening. And this is what I think went down. Okay. I tell him I'm on my way. And that's when he told me that he was going to go to Home Depot. He had the plan to not be there when I was there and just show up after I'm gone. I am so pissed. (laughs) And so I'm yelling at him. I'm like, why couldn't have this waited until after the appointment? The appointment without you there was like an hour. If you were there, it probably would have been like 30 minutes at the most for us to go, "Mm, this is really good. Yes, we'll have this for our dinner at our wedding in like four months. Right? That makes sense to some, but oh my God, that makes sense to some people, right? Like, why couldn't you have waited until after the appointment? Or why couldn't you have done it when you got up that morning? That way you would have been ready to go. And then after the appointment, you could have got started on the shed. Or did he even go to Home Depot? Because he's been doing drugs. How do I not know that he went to hang out with one of his buddies And he only got home when I called him and he finally answered. I don't know. I was mad. I was livid. I was so mad. I've never been more mad in my life. I was so peeved to the point where I was screaming at him to the point where I woke my dad up that night because I was screaming mad. I hung up the phone threw it on the couch and I was bawling my ass out. My dad came out of his room, which we are in my dad's room right now. This was my dad's room before he passed. Um, he came out of his room, sat down on the couch next to me and hugged me while I was crying my eyes out. That's how a I'm there for you. He was my dad at the drop of a hat. If you needed him, he would be there. And while we were on our trip in Georgia, He tried so hard to keep me from continuing my relationship with Ray. And I was borderline resentful because I was like, you know, he's not that bad of a guy. You know, this is normal stuff. Oh my God, I'm crying. This is normal stuff. It's fine. But he ended up being right because I broke it up. Broke up with him that night that I was screaming at him about missing the caterer. Oh, he didn't have to go anywhere. He just had to stay at his mom's house for half an hour. And he couldn't even do that. And I told him, I I was yelling at him. I was like, if you can't even just stay at your mom's house to be able to eat food, how, what reassurances do I have that you will show up for our wedding? For the actual day. How do I know that you're going to do. Because up until this point. You haven't proved to me that you would. So I I called it off then. 
And after that, his mom, I like I, while I was on this rant, screaming tirade, I told him, I was like, I will be there on, on Sunday to pick up my dog. And the reason why he had my dog to begin with, this is the dog that we got. Um, this is Copper. This is the dog that he got me for Valentine's Day, right? <clears throat> the reason why he had our dog is because we were still together. We were planning on getting married and moving in together. So, you know, it made sense to keep the dogs together at that point. Um, I didn't have any way to keep them. He wanted to keep the dogs anyway, which whatever. It wasn't like I was going to win that argument because he took them from me when I was alone. So <sighs> he had copper and I told him, I was like, I'm coming on, I'm coming on Sunday and I'm going to get my dog. And I hung up. His mom texts me and she's like, you know, whatever happens between you and Ray is between you and Ray, but don't take the dog. And I'm like, what right do you have? That's when I yelled at her. <laughs> well, text yelled, I guess. And I was like, you know what? You are the biggest enabler on the face of the planet. Your son is such a piece of work. He can't keep any promise he makes. He can't keep down a job because he has the inability of getting up early in the morning. And the reason why he has an inability of getting up early in the morning is because you require him not to have to put any effort into anything of his adult life. Nothing. Zero effort. He doesn't have to pay bills because mom will be there. He doesn't have to have a job because mom will support him. So I'm like, you have, the, you are the biggest enabler on the face of the planet. I was like, I don't believe anything you fucking say. I am coming to get my dog, like it or not. And so I show up on Sunday and uh, they hid my dog from me. I don't know if he was just in the house. She wouldn't let me in the house. Um, she called me that bitch. So there's that. Um, I threw the fact that uh, Ray was couldn't wait until his mom died so he could have the house. I threw that in her face because uh, you have my dog, bitch. Um, the guys, so one of Ray's friends, Eli, I see you, Eli. Um, he was living in Ray's old room in the house. Ray was living in the garage. That's how that worked um, because Eli and his girlfriend were paying rent. Ray was not. Ray didn't want to kick him out. Brenda didn't want to kick them out. So Eli and his girlfriend were in the house in Ray's old room. Ray was in the garage. I opened the gate because I'm like, I'm going to get my dog one way or another. I opened the gate and Eli come busting out. He's like, you better let those dogs out. You better fucking close that gate. I'm like, I just here. For, I'm just here for copper. That's it. I'm just here for my fucking dog. I don't give a shit about you. I don't give a shit about your girlfriend. I don't give a shit about any of this, especially since Eli, the piece of shit that he is, would donate plasma just to get money so he can blow it on um, marijuana and other drugs. So I couldn't give two shits about what Eli thought. All right. I was like, I'm just here for my fucking dog. Ray comes out and he's like, I don't have your dog. Oh, actually, Ray doesn't come out yet. Brenda comes out and she's like, he's not here. You can't have him. He's not here. I was like, can I at least come in and look? And then she's like, nope, I don't want you in my, in my house. Keep that bitch away from my house. So I go back out onto the property, uh, out onto the side of the road by my um, truck. I call the lake. I'm going to put it out there. I call the Lakewood police. Now you have all the information you need to find everybody. <laughs> Whatever. I call the Lakewood police and there's nothing they can do because possession is nine tenths, nine tenths of the law in Colorado. I have to file a civil suit with um, Jefferson County in order to try and get my dog back. So I do just that. Um, the next afternoon that I have off, I drive all the way to Jefferson County Courthouse. I go through the process of um, filing a civil suit. Um, the only thing that I had left to do was to um, deliver the lawsuit, which... I didn't want to hire anybody to do. I didn't want to make anybody do. I didn't want to do it myself. I was convinced. I was tempted to just put it in the mailbox and leave it, but you have to actually give it to the person. I'm like, I don't want to face him again. And I was thinking about it as well. I'm like, man, it's going to be months until we can get a court date. It's going to probably take longer than that to get anything going. And I'm like, all the money I'll have to spend to be able to try and get copper back i'm like it's not 
not that he wasn't worth it. It's just at that point I had exhausted everything of in my mental capabilities to put up with Ray and all of his bullshit and his family and his friends. I just wanted it done. I just wanted it over and done with. So I had texted him and I was like, hey, you can keep copper. But here's the stipulation. If at any, his, uh, his microchip will stay in my name and I will continue and it'll be my information on his microchip. Um, if at any point you feel like you cannot keep him anymore before you rehome him, contact me first. That was a stipulation, which I thought was fair. You know, it was very fair. He could keep the dog. If he ended up in a situation where he couldn't keep copper, contact me, see if I can take him. If not, we'll figure something out. You know, it was fair. It was very fair in my, in my thoughts. And he agreed to it. And I was like, all right, cool. And that was the end of our relationship. Fast forward to uh, 2020, I started a new life. Um, I went to school to be a vet assistant. I got a new job as a vet assistant. I have new friends. I'm doing well. (laughs) I'm doing well. I have a channel here that's kind of doing okay. And that brings us to today. Well, not today, but to the present. And the reason why I am bringing this up, okay, is because he brought it on himself. So if you don't know, Facebook added a a, a feature onto their app called Facebook Dating of which I have been a part of for the last two-ish years, okay? Off and on. It's not like I've been constantly on it. It's just like, you know, a couple months here. I'm like, eh, whatever, and I'll leave it alone for a few months, and I go back to it, and I'm like, eh. You get bad experiences on online dating, okay? So, here is the latest update between me and Ray. I am holding up my phone right now. I have screenshots of this entire conversation, And uh, I will post them up here next to me so you guys can see it yourselves. So, 10 a.m., yes, uh, let's see, 10 a.m., Friday, May 19th, I get a notification that a man named Ray wanted to match on dating. And I'm like, that's weird. And I look at the um, notification and on the notifications when it says like so-and-so wants to match with you on dating, there's like a little icon with their picture. Now, for the last few years, I've been kind of loosely Facebook stalking Ray. Um, I say loosely because basically I unfriended him at that point. I blocked his mom because I was pissed at her Um, and unfriended him. So, you know, if you're not friends with certain people, if they have their profile as private, you can't see much. So I sort of Facebook stalked him. Basically what I would do is I'd go on his profile and just see what he was up to. Um, but, you know, and he would pop up on people you may know because we have a lot of common friends. <clears throat> and uh, I was able to keep up with his uh, profile picture. And if you don't know, Facebook dating uses your profile picture as your first picture on your dating profile. So I saw his profile picture pop up. I'm like, there's no freaking way this dude just matched with me on Facebook, but he did. Um, After a little bit of deliberation, I was wondering if I should accept it, and I did. I did match with him on purpose because I wanted to see if this was accidental or if it was on purpose. So I sent the first message. I sent to him, I said, what made you join Facebook dating? And he responded about two hours later, I don't know, maybe because I have no friends left. I responded, I'm sure that's not true. It is true. Everyone I used to know basically disappeared, whether that's because of them doing drugs or like Mario moved to Florida. That is when I knew he knew who I was. Because one, if I was a stranger, he wouldn't just say Mario. And two... This is a tactic, okay? This is the pity me, poor me, look how bad I am, feel sympathy for me so I can get what I want. 
So I threw any pretense I had of him pretending to not know who I was out the window. And so I just dived in head first. And I said, really? Or Mario moved to Florida? Really? Why? And he says, yep. And married some chick that honestly looks like a dude. I'm not sure why. So I proceeded to ask him, what about the rest of the crew? Like Lucky. Now Lucky, um, his name is Lucky because he's like a huge four clover Lee or four clover tattooed on his neck. Um, we had some run-ins with him. Uh, he accused Ray of stealing drugs and selling them on the side. Um, basically screwing lucky over and, you know, we both denied it up and down. I'm not sure if that's true anymore. Um, he also, uh, lured Ray or Ray ditched me on our, um, anniversary to go hang out with lucky and I ended up spending the, my anniversary with my cousin. So I'm not a big fan of Lucky Boy. But uh, he responded saying, Lucky's in prison. He ended up running from the halfway house where he got caught with 27 tabs of acid. And somewhere tipped off, someone tipped off Lakewood that he was here. So I got to see him for all of a month. But that month, it wasn't the same luck. He's gotten bad on drugs too. I'm sorry. I know he was a close friend of yours. How's your mom doing? Basically, I want to find out everything. Okay. I want to know what his life has been like for the last few years, like the last four years. I want to know. And he just responded doing well. Cool. I said, that's good. Look, I'm just going to say it. I don't know if you match with me because you were bored, lonely, or horny, or if you even did it on purpose. It's whatever. But you don't have to keep talking to me if you don't want to. We can be somewhat friends if you want to. I'm okay with that if you are. I know our history is muddy and filled with pain. If you don't want to talk to me, I won't take it personally or be upset or mad or jaded or anything. Now, I had extended an olive branch about two, a year and a half ago. I sent him a random message um, apologizing for my behavior and my role in the way things ended up between us. Um, all he responded back was, thank you, I guess. That was weird. Um, he responded back to this text saying, I appreciate it. You of all people would know how horrible I am with a phone to talk or to talk to. I'm not really sure what I'm doing anymore. I got in a job at advanced auto parts here and got fired and rehired and fired again for not being able to make it in on time. Remember when I said that Bob had to pound on the window to get him up? Still an issue. Why weren't you able to make it on time? Still having trouble getting up in the morning? Kinda. It didn't matter what time I was scheduled for. For some reason, I just couldn't get there on time. So I responded, Nice to see that some things never change. I do have one question, though. How is Copper? Now, I have avoided asking him about Copper, how he's doing, you know, for pictures. I've been avoiding it because I'm like, I don't want to talk to him. He probably doesn't want to talk to me. It's best if we just left it at that. But I'm like, I, 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 I need to know. I need to know how my dog is doing. And this is the response that I got this morning. At 9.36 a.m. this morning. <laughs> we had to put him down. He ended up eating some pig dewormer. We spent about $4,000 trying to save him. And we ended up cremating him. And he sits next to Duke, who we had to put down shortly after Copper. And I had asked how long ago, but he hasn't responded back yet. But <laughs> that is the update. <laughs> um, to tell you that I cried this morning uh, is an understatement. <laughs> I was bawling my eyes out. My, my mom was very concerned for me. Because, uh, um, you know, I, I love Copper. I thought about him every day. And I'm very sad that uh, he's no longer with us. And the entire reason why I left him with uh, Ray and Brenda is because I had foolishly thought that he would be okay. That he'd be safe. That he'd be happy. He'd have his pack there. He'd have Ray, you know. 
and it should he should have been happier and he should have been healthier. But now that I know the truth about what happened to him, and I don't even know that's the real truth, um, it kind of makes me wish that I had fought a little harder for him. <laughs> that I had gone through with the civil suit. Because maybe I would have ended up with him and he'd be alive today. I don't know. But, uh... That's, uh, that's the update. And that's the entire story of me and my ex. And it's now out there. For all to see and hear. <laughs> um, I have never been more devastated in my life. I, it, I can't tell you how upset I am about this. I mean, I had thought that... It was behind me that we were over. And I hope that giving you guys this experience, that giving you guys this story, telling it this to guys, oh my God, telling you this story would help you guys in some way. Um, some things <laughs> should have been left dead at the very beginning. I mean, I should have broke it off with him after that first time. After that first time we broke up, we should have just stayed broken up we should not have gotten back together um because it was just a lot of heartache and pain a lot of wasted time and uh just wasted time on somebody that wasn't worth it and who didn't want to put the same amount of effort and time into the relationship that I was so there's also that <laughs> but uh I hope you guys get something out of this um can put your thoughts or any advice that you guys might have in the comments for anybody else who come, runs across this video. If this is something that you guys want me to do more of, I'll be glad to. I have nothing to hide. Um, if not, that's fine. I don't. It's fine. We'll figure. I'll figure something else out. Um, I will get back to doing Jedi Survivor. It's just with OBS being a pain in the ass and not wanting to communicate with my um, Nvidia gate uh, card. It's just, it's, it's been a slog and trying to edit those when I had, it's just, uh, it takes me a long time to edit some of those. Sometimes I don't really put much editing in there because I have to get those edited out or edited and done and posted pretty quick. And, uh, I don't have the time to put in a lot of effort right now. I mean, I probably wouldn't have done this story if Ray hadn't messaged, if Ray hadn't matched with me on Facebook yesterday. So that's where we're at. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna try harder for you guys. Um, I was actually absolutely blown away, and this is something to end with. If you made it this far, congratulations. This is probably the longest video I've ever made. Um. But I was absolutely blown away by, which one is it? By my second episode, my second video of Dead Eye Survivor, the Where's Grease, Where's the Grease? I had 60 views on that video within the first 12 hours. That's insane, you guys. That is insane. And I'm very thankful for those of you who watched it. Um, I'm very thankful for my subscribers that came from probably possibly that video. I'm going to work hard on getting those um, videos recorded and then uploaded for you guys. Um, thank you guys so much for your support. And thank you guys for watching. If you made it this far, I congratulate you because this is going to be a long one. And I don't know. I'm I'm not sure if I'm going to do this in one episode or I might just do this one episode. We'll see. We'll see who watches it. <laughs> if you're a real one. Thank you so much for sticking for, with me for this long. This is a long, long episode. And I know there's some things I'm going to have to edit out, and that's fine. But um, thank you guys for your support. 